Who's your guy? Hayseed. Hayseed? Hansy. Oh. So real quick, I all took, right. I took tire, our tier. He's the party dwarf. Nice. Okay, so real quick, what we got is now you guys have clearly been adventuring together since first level. So the purposes of Days of Light, you guys have run through the first mod, um, and you've kind of made your bones against evil doers everywhere, right? So you guys should know some something about each other. So we'll start with. Um, John over here, if you want to introduce your character and your background, we got to know a little bit about your background. Oh, okay, uh, my character is Bowden, he's a half-elf paladin, he's uh, a uh, acolyte of Tyr, basically decided to go out and uh, prove himself worthy by smiting evil everywhere he sees it. Alright, half-elf paladin. And what is your background? My background, acolyte. Acolyte. So you were raised in a ch in a church setting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in turn, now you obviously you're going to become intimate with one another to a degree. So if if you have a flaw that that would have been glaring during the first adventure, you might want to share. You don't have to read it verbatim, but maybe you share. Hey, my guy is a little bit short tempered, or that sort of thing. So do you, who? What was your flaw? Oh, all right. We'll move on to Matt. Then. Uh, my dwarf is Gordas, Stoutbeard. Uh, where he, he comes from, he used to be mostly involved in uh, scouting parties in the tunnel around town, keeping him clear of kinds of vermin and foul beasts. And he had uh, an incident where uh, his best friend uh, was killed, and after that, he kind of left his place to go wander around because he couldn't really deal with that. Made a plan. Yeah, there you it's go. More familiar. <laughs> a German Shepherd familiar. I think it has more than two hit points. <laughs> Although she can be bought with food. All right, cool. Scott, what do you got? Uh, so my character is Antis. He's a human life cleric uh, with an acolyte background. Uh, when he and his sister were children. Uh, uh, plague went through the town and killed his parents, so he was orphaned and uh, was raised by his uncle, who was a cleric. Um, and so he uh, became a cleric to uh, help those, help heal those around him. So uh, the, the plague had a lasting impact on him, which is why he went down the life path. Right on. So what kind of what kind of flaw does your character have? Or if it's uh, something that doesn't stand out, you don't necessarily have to share it. Uh, my piety sometimes leads me to put blindly trust those that profess faith in my God. Okay. So if we find another power or world that I trust the people in my temple too well. Yeah. There you go. So if you find Maybe another religious thing. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Josh, what you got? I am Hagmar Joyra. I uh, I'm a professor from uh, college, and uh, and my personality trait is that I am used to helping out other people, like teaching at college, and then uh, my person is more of a logical thinker than an emotion per emotional person, and he always carries around this uh, book that's with him. And then uh, his flaw is that um, he do he doesn't really think before he speaks. <laughs> that's Josh too. That's perfect you for you. That's perfect for you. So, uh, hi. So he carries around this tome that he doesn't want let anyone else look at, and it's very important to him. Byron, what you got? I am a uh, human monk, Mitch Bean. All right, Mitch. Um, I was a smuggler, and I was my flower that I let the uh, my partner go down for the crime. And then I went to a monastery and became a monk and decided that maybe I need to run around and free people and atone for that. 
Okay. So you let someone take the fall for that, huh? <laughs> all right. All right. That's, that's all right. He's, he was a high elf named Agmar. Do you see him now? Uh, no. All right. Up next. Uh, I guess his name is Mel Havoc Icewing. He is an elf ranger. And we claim that uh, he's been adventuring for years, like well past what a pickle he should be. And he was married. His wife was killed by an orc. Uh, and that at the same time, the orcs. They raided his house, killed his wife, they cast some spell on him, they raised him back down to zero level. And that's why he's so low now. And then, uh, that's my favorite enemy, is Orcs, and I'm out trying to get vengeance for her. Alright. So he uh, carries uh, this curse. <laughs> What's your character name? Right now? Havoc. M-A-L-H-A-V-O-C. Alright, what do we got with Lance? My character is Snogglebottom Weaselteats. <laughs> Hill Dwarf War Cleric. Uh, he called me Snod. Uh, he likes to party. <laughs> He's, uh, his sol- he was a soldier background. Uh, was drummed out of the military for hitting, uh, fighting with a high level, a higher ranking uh, officer. But he still uh, hangs out with a couple of his old buddies. Uh, his uh, flaw is that he likes to get drunk and get rowdy. Uh, never turns down a drinking contest. <laughs> All Basically right. a drunk. Oh, I, sh- I should say, too, that after uh, leaving the monastery, I kind of recently reconnected with my family that I was hard with for the years that I was there. So, just to let you know. <coughs> oh, that's good. What's your character's name? So the only card I'm missing then is Byron's. He's going to get that to me shortly. I'll probably use these for initiative trackers, too. I can just put them in order then. I stole that from, uh, well, I didn't really steal it. She, there's a lady online who does some uh, proof reading for me, and she uses these cards that she sleeves in the Magic the Gathering, your, your dragon shield sleeves, mm-hmm. with all this information on them, and then she can just shuffle through them you know, and, and put them in the initiative order. Um, which is a lot better than writing it out, you know. But uh, I'm sure there's lots of people out there, but she was the one that showed me that. Okay, so we pick up in Holmford, actually outside of Holmford, at Berenice Charant's hut um, at the edge of the Hornwood. Um, the It's late fall, and um, you've just destroyed the Cauldron of Blight, slain the night hag that had abducted the children, um, rescued all five children alive. So you guys are hailed as heroes, um, and of course the devout worshippers of St. Cuthbert who dwell in this little this little community of uh, cudgelers, as they're called. Um, you know, they sing your praises, you're always welcome in their town, free room and board at the saint's rest. Whole nine yards. Free alcohol. Free alcohol. They'll give you all the screaming orc you can drink. All right. Who's up for a contest? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, Berenice, as she told you guys before, during during the first crisis, you know, she had come to this village thirty years earlier to find out what what had befell this this region, this community, uh, where the, the the wildlife was driven out, and the, all of the surrounding um, wilderness blighted. Literally overnight, crops failed. Um, and she, so she's been researching this issue uh, for quite some time. When the hag resurfaced again um, with the coming of the next harvest, blood moon, um, and her research has led her to discover that this hag is but one of many in a coven. That dwells far to the south. Um, so she's gonna. A- she asks you guys to travel south to a place known as the Blightmoor, which is a 
festering bog that that uh, it's actually illegal to approach. Most of the neighboring kingdoms um, fear this place as a, a place of evil, a cursed place. And whatever evil dwells there, they fear that uh, if their citizens draw too close, they'll draw the ire of, of whatever evil forces dwell there. Um, those who have ventured too close to the mire um, have disappeared for long periods of time, only to turn up again later. They're alive, but they might as well not be. They're completely insane, covered in hideous scars of clear acts of torture and barbarity. Um, many of them can't speak. Uh, those that can just ramble on and babble about um, a hideousness, a hideousness they keep repeating. Um, however, what she did learn is that there are those who can travel near the Blight Blightmoor safely. At the edge of the Blightmoor, at the northwest, northwestern edge of the Blightmoor, there's a community, a village known as Quag Cove. And these people, for whatever reason, are seem to be unmolested by whatever evil forces lie within the, the Blightmoor, within the swamp. Um, however, the, the, the catch is that it's a community of that was founded by a notorious river pirate named Tobias Drake. Um, Tobias Drake is long dead. and But this community's been there for more than 60 years. And... The pirates know that the neighboring kingdoms aren't going to come anywhere near. So these brigands and cutthroats, they use the Blightmoor as cover for their activities. They sail up and down the Brindle River, raiding um, small communities and towns, oftentimes taking slaves, all the loot they can carry. Um, what Berenice has learned is that there's one gang in particular that's been that's been particularly uh, successful raiding in the last maybe two years. They're known as the Lasher Gang, though she doesn't know much about them. She's only heard rumors. Uh, but the Lasher Gang for the last two years have been virtually unstoppable. Uh, but what she does say, though, is that she has a friend that has managed to find Quag Cove, though she hasn't heard from him in a long time. When she learned of the place's existence, um, there's a fellow druid of hers who is also a member of the Emerald Enclave who she asked to go to this place and find out what, she, what he can learn. Um, he, she wasn't really interested in the activities of the pirates. She's more interested in what's befallen this, this uh, swamp what this evil force is, because it's clearly connected to the to this coven of night hags, uh, and his name is Brother Gwern. He's an old, old friend of hers, very old half elf uh, and druid. But she does warn you, uh, he can be a bit on the peculiar, peculiar side. If I can get the word out. Is there anything we can tell him to let him know we're coming? Just tell her that you're friends of Berenice's. And he's actually quite friendly. He tends to keep to himself, but when he has visitors, he he, he can be a very good host if you could put up with his antics. And she kind of gives a chuckle at that. Um, in fact, when you find him, be sure to tell him, give him my best. Um, so, at this point... Um, Berenice talks to the town folk, <laughs> and once the bridges have been repaired, so a few weeks go by, and they've, they've made some repairs to the bridges that were taken out by the, the terrible storms, um, and they arrange for you guys to take some, some boats south. The, the, uh, the swamp is pretty far south, but it'll take you a few weeks by boat to get down there. Um, so you're going from kind of a temperate climate to more of like a tropical climate, hot and humid, even in the winter. Um, so if 
you know, Homeford was kind of sandwiched in between here, and there was a lake. Um, then the Brindle River kind of winds really far south. And again, this, this entire adventure is meant to be setting independence. So if someone wants to slap this in Greyhawk, they can slap it in Greyhawk. If they want to slap it in Forgotten Realms, they can't. So I'm not really going to pull out a map of Forgotten Realms and show you where this is, but I'm just trying to give you a, kind of a representation of where you guys are heading. But there are large numbers of tributaries that come off of the Brindle River as you guys move south. But she just tells you, stay on the main river, and eventually you'll come to Quag Cove. And you'll know it because Quag Cove is a city built on the swamp. It's an entire city built on stilts. Um, you can try to access it from the swamp below, but you'll have to do some climbing. And entering the, entering the, the town from, from the swamp um, might draw some undue uh, inquiries from the pirates. However, if you come into town via the, tr the trestle bridge here, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, covered bridge there, there's a, there is a, a uh, drawbridge to the, to the covered bridge, but it's usually open. Come into town like you would normally, and provided you are able to act in an inconspicuous manner, people, there are mercenaries that come and go there. However, there are also bounty hunters that come and go there. So the people are all going to be very suspicious of you initially. There are people of good heart in this place. So keep an eye out for them. But never forget, this is a den of thieves and cutthroats. There's no way around it. But try, you're going to, in order to find the, the hags, you're going to need to make allies in this place. So that will be your first task that I would ask you to do is find a way to find find a way to to make allies in this place who may know something about the coven. They've dwelt here for sixty years, right at the mouth of the the, the hags' uh, activities here, and there must be something, something or someone that can help you there find out where these hags dwell. Do you have any questions? Do you have any idea of the number of eggs? Um, Brother Gorn has been researching the coven directly. Uh, my studies have been focused on how to help this community in Holmford, um, but all indications are that um, most of the hags do not dwell in the swamp. They belong to the coven. They operate as a unit. They share knowledge with, with one another, but they they, their, their true motivation lies in, in moving out into the world and spreading misery. So you may not necessarily find a lot of hags at this place, but somewhere within that swamp is their source of power. And that is what you need to destroy. Brother Gorin is going to be able to tell you more. He's what you, he is who you need to find. Where can we find him again? Does he live in that town? He lives somewhere there, yeah. In the town or in the area? Yeah, somewhere. He's a druid. I, I wouldn't oh, necessarily look for him in around. the town, but it's possible that he, he has made his way into town. Plus someone hugging a tree. Probably. <laughs> doing something. Most people will do it. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Do you have any other questions for Berenice before you head out? And everyone's spent their, their winnings, right? Their, their gold that they're going to spend. Um, you got plenty of arrows. All the armor you could eat. So, the tagline to the front of the mod is, Holmford is saved, but the nightmare is far from over. Defeat has stoked the coven's rage and set them on the trail of those who dared foil their plans. The heroes must now take the fight to the hags before dark forces can turn the hunters into the hunted. Deep within the Blightmoor, the tree of decay, home to the Great Coven awaits. Okay. 
So you guys spend a couple weeks on the river, um, taking these small single sail ships. Or I shouldn't even call them ships; they're more like boats. Single sail boats. You have a pair of them south, um, and they each each boat also has a pair of two pairs of oars. So you use the sail and you use the oars to kind of navigate. Um, and it takes you a few weeks going south. Um, and once you get to the point where you you have you believe that you should be arriving at your destination at any day, you start seeing evidence of the river pirates' activities. You pass communities um, clearly burned out and abandoned. Um, you see uh, tributaries that run off of the uh, main river. And you, Kind of, you can look down those tributaries and you see destroyed bridges. You see, uh, but you also see lots of armed guards who are now keeping watch. The kingdoms, while they don't want to go anywhere near the Blightmoor, have begun to set up networks, uh, basically like a Pony Express, where they keep an eye out for these the sails of the, the river pirates going up and down the river, hoping to. Uh, to warn people, because to this point, this, this particular gang, the Lasher gang, has been um, very successful in, in raiding. Even, even, and this is what Berenice tells you, even when they know they're coming, the, the soldiers and the militias have been a, unable to stand up to this leader of the, of the Lasher gang, who no one really seems to know anything about. But, so his, his skill with a blade seems to be... Um, quite adept, but the, the rumor is that uh, no matter how um, how many wounds this man takes, he never seems to go down. Never, they unable to kill him. They've set up entire ambushes for the pirates, and this, this uh, pirate leader will literally push his way straight through these ambushes, killing everyone in his path. And no matter what kind of wound they deliver, um, he just keeps going. In this area? Yeah. Uh, well, down coming down the river, it's it's very wild, it's, especially as you're getting closer to uh, the swamps, and you're able to kind of pull off, talk to some of these soldiers and guards that are that are posted along the river. Um, and they're quite friendly, and they're actually quite nervous about these postings. You learn that uh, none of them want to be there. They they believe that, uh, without question, the, the leader of this, this pirate gang must have some sort of evil within him, or made some sort of evil pact that has allowed him to, to do the things he's done. Um, but they also warn you, the closer you get to Quag Cove, it seems though the uh, the land just completely dies or is sick for lack of a better word besides the animals around there? in Blightmoor? Yeah. Uh, well they don't go near the Blightmoor so they couldn't tell you but if you get close to it the, the land turns from you know kind of a lush green into more of a brown and a, a wilted brown you know So eventually, and we'll say another couple days passes, and in the horizon you see a large fog bank at the edge of which, and looking through the haze, you can see that covered bridge up ahead. And the covered bridge extends all the way to the land, across the river to the shore on the west bank of the river. and through the haze, you can see this stilted community. And the community has actually pushed 15 feet above the waterline. So it's got, if you don't enter it through the, the bridge, it's, it's got a pretty defensible location, provided they have the people to uh, demand all of the docks that you see there. Um, you can see there's some activity, but again, it's, it's, it's just inside of this fog bank. It just seems to be perpetually there, regardless of wind. 
Um, uh, you can make a knowledge arcana. An arcana check. Ooh. There's definitely something unnatural at work here. Yeah, there's a natural, there's a, something unnatural at work here. And the smell of rotting vegetation, um, stagnant water begins to grow stronger in your nose as you guys, as you guys get, get closer. Um, so the question I have for you guys is how do you guys want to enter town? Those are lower docks here. Those are lower docks. They're further in the back of the. Which way? You guys are coming from the west there, or I'm sorry, from the north. She said we'd draw even more attention to ourselves if we tried to sneak in from the swamp. So, so just walk in the front door. Yeah. So the town itself seems to be surrounded by large cypress trees that don't seem to do so well. Um, however, they are alive, and around the bases of these cypress trees, there's a lot of briars, thickets that they seem to compete for nutrition with from. Um, oh, hang on, that's my wife. Hello? Yeah? Oh, someone have a Toyota? Your alarm's going off. What, what color is it? Honda, maybe? Brownish? Brownish, greenish? Someone's alarm's going off out there. Directly in front of our house. All right, bye. So that would be uh, Stogs. <laughs> the alarm's going off. Um, so when you look at the, the terrain around here, you've got dense clumps of cypress trees, thickets, um, briars. From the cypress trees, you see all the moss hanging down. And it seems to be ha hanging in huge clumps. Um, and it sways with the wind, though the wind doesn't seem to have much of an impact. No, the black car in front of mine is going off. The black car. Who's got a black car? A black car. Maybe it's your going off. So the, the moss seems to sway in the wind, but the fog seems to be completely unaffected by the wind. It just per, is perpetually there. Um, the fog is densest near the swamp at the bottom, yeah. but the, the entire community, though it's raised 15 feet, is still inside of this bank, though it is thinner at that elevation. So let's just wait for, uh, wait for our barbarian to return. So there is a breeze. Yes. Is it you? Yeah, I guess I just sat with the way where the key ring presses on the reason. Oh, yeah. The first time it happens, probably won't be best. Yeah. Alright. So what I was saying to them is that the fog is densest near the near the, the ground, the swamp itself. But even though the community is raised 15 feet up out of the swamp, the, the fog still manages to reach that high, though it's not as dense. So um, if you were down in the fog by day, you might have a visual acuity going out about 30 feet. And then beyond that, you could probably still see, but you're not going to see details. You're going to see if, if an individual were, say, 40 or 50 feet away, you'd see a dark silhouette in the, in the, in, in the mist. Up, up top, on the docks, you're probably seeing about 60 feet before you have some sort of obscured vision. Um, so, are you guys going to ride in to the to the through Those the two small islands? Yeah, there's two muddy islands right next to the, the cove, um, and there's muddy islands all over the place. But those are the two that are closest, and there seems to be the the there seems to be activity on them, though you can't really see very well. Now, what stands out to all of you? in this field of browns and grays and hazy fog, the northernmost island there is lush and green and alive. 
kind of dock on this? No. No. Whereas the bigger one is like the most crazy. Yeah. So we just roll up in the town first. Um, and as you guys are going forward, you see the the eastern um, docks there. The easternmost docks, next to the big warehouse-looking thing. Uh, there are eight to ten ships, long ships, so single sail long ships with probably eight to ten oars on each of them. Um, and you've heard stories that these are the types of ships that the river pirates used to raid up and down the coast, or up and down the river. Um, so the, those, those docks are pretty full right now of, of ships. Is that the best place to park? Well, you can, you can beach your ship um, on the north bank and then take the bridge in town if you wish. Or you can try to find a place to, to dock your boat. Um, anyone want to make a, a nature check as you guys are coming in? Okay. So when you guys are walking in, you can see that virtually the entire community is built from cypress wood. So it's a hard wood, which means it's going to last a long time. Uh, but still, in this environment, it's, it's wet, it rains frequently. Um, you can, looking around, you can see that a lot of the buildings are in very poor shape, even at a distance. You can see, like, uh, position uh, number two. It's a large, large two-story house. The whole entire structure is leaning to one side pretty severely, and there's been some kind of makeshift repairs done to make sure it doesn't collapse into the swamp. Um, but as you guys come, sign on that building, that well, you can't really see that far yet. You just can see that. Whoa, there's like there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done in this community because a lot of the buildings are leaning and um, in poor condition. It wouldn't be like that if it was made of stone. Well, yeah. Well, right. Things made of stone Looks just kind of sink in the swamp. Looks like the pirates aren't putting any money back in the infrastructure. So a sturdy 20 foot wide cypress ramp gradually rises from the shoreline to a height of 15 feet above the swamp before arriving at a covered bridge. Though it leans slightly forward, the bridge is stout, measuring 40 feet wide and 60 feet long, and features a 15 foot long drawbridge that stands open during the day. <clears throat> Torches burn at 20 foot intervals inside the bridge, illuminating the cranking mechanism that operates the drawbridge. When you look through the bridge, you can see <coughs> four kind of... Uh, swarthy looking individuals that seem to be posted on the south end of the draw or uh, the south end of the covered bridge there uh, and they kind of eye you suspiciously um, they have um, long swords at their side and they, they do look battle hardened uh, yeah these guys are human um, so you guys gonna go oh. go ahead and go through the covered bridge? Yes. All right. So as you guys walk in, they eye you suspiciously again, but they don't try to stop you. They don't question you. Um, but you get about halfway through the the covered bridge, and you see one of them kind of run off. Past us? No, he goes or? into town. Okay. Uh, are we gonna uh, are we close to them yet? You're about. Uh, 20 feet from them. Okay. They're not, they don't seem to be moving to block your way. They don't try to stop you. They just stare at you. When we get even with them, I'd like to stop and ask them a question. Okay, what do you want to ask them? Where's the best place to get a drink? Where's the best place to get a drink? Kind of looks you up and down. He says, yeah, go to the muck spout. Go to the, yeah, go to the muck spout. You see the other guys laughing. Is there a better place than that? Or is that the only place? That's the best place to drink in this town. All right. Thank you, sir. The guy ran off. Did he look around or did he go straight? Um, he went down. He went past the big number two. 
And yeah, and then he goes to that building directly across from it. Cool. Yep. And he's talking to some some of the guys there. Um, and several of those guys then kind of run off. It seems that your arrival is sp the news of your arrival is spreading quickly. Would anyone here recognize us since we're so famous? You're famous in Holmford. You okay. know, population but, 50. But, but I, I, I guess I was wondering how much traffic goes up and down that somebody well, here the reason, maybe not down. Well, the reason why the people of Holmford chose that location to make their uh, community, their religious community, is because it is isolated. So news of your triumph probably did not spread very far. So where is that muck spout place you talked about? You want to ask him? Yeah. Yes. How do we get to the muck spout? Um, well, he tells you to go past that big warehouse down there. Yeah, walk past that place, and and it's the place caddy corner to it. You can make an insight. Yeah, you feel like he's he's uh, trying to set you up for something. Definitely feel like he's not even trying to hide it. Either his his buddies are all snickering. So as you guys cross over, you reach the kind of the the the, uh, the crossroads there with the with the large platform. Um, you can see down to the the building there at number two. It's a massive two story house, and clearly has seen better days. Um, though you can still see that at one time this place was painted white. Um, because you can see little patches of white paint that still cling stubbornly to the walls. Uh, but the cypress planks that cover the building exterior are largely exposed and weather-worn. But it is cypress, so it's going to last in this environment. The building itself leans precariously to the left, uh, but has been reinforced with timbers to prevent collapse. Under a wide pillared porch, several women, their clothes hanging loosely around their bodies, um, some of them holding handheld fans. It's rather warm and muggy in this area. Um, a few blow kisses at you and, and call of you and say, come on, guys, come party. It's kind of telling is the first building inside the town. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know the priority. I think hand seat needs to question. <laughs> and it's halfway between the docks and the entryways. <laughs> no uh, but there's no, no sign hangs there. Um, so as you guys you see, it, you're, you are in that. You guys are on that. Uh, that oops, this this point right here. This this crossroads here, large crossroads, and there's a number of guys kind of hanging out around there, who all eye you. But a small a girl comes up to you. She looks like she's about uh, 11 or 12 years old, and she says, uh, "Are you sure you guys are in the right place?" Probably more than you. This is quite cove, correct? Yeah, but you don't. You got some gold. You got some gold I can have. I I don't think you'll be needing it much longer anyway. You might as well just give it to me. Well, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you give her gold. You give her gold. Ah, you, you guys are definitely new here, aren't you? What gave us? What gave you the clue? Uh, well, you're not covered in mud, and you can see that she's filthy. She does. She looks like Where she's. Where did she come from? Um, well, make a perception test to see how how uh, nope. observant 16. you guys were. I was checking 16. ladies if any had beard. So I didn't see where they were. Twenty-two. Oh, you you happen to catch out of the corner of your eye. She literally came up from under the dock. That's scary. Is she walking backwards? <laughs> <laughs> no, she just popped up from under the dock. Crap, um, her clothes look like they, they're made out of potato sacks. Um, she doesn't wear any shoes. She's filthy. Her hair is matted. And, um, Where are your parents? Well, my parents are dead. But that's, that doesn't matter now. Uh, my name's Sabina. Sabina Gray. You look like you could you guys could use some help if you're gonna if you're gonna come into Quag Cove like this, carrying all that gold. 
Yeah. How can you help thing about all that gold? Oh, I can hear the jingle a mile away. So can everyone else here. That's, that's my chamber. Gopper. How how can you What's help? What's her last name again? Sabina, Sabina Gray. Gray. Like what percent. what do you think you can do for us? Well, I can show you around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask her where the uh, the muck spout is. Oh, you don't want to go there. Is there a better place? If you wanna you wanna stay in town, you gotta go to the Odiug's Bathwater. That's the best inn in town. Okay. How do we get there? Can you take us there? Oh yeah, just follow me. So she. Uh, begins to lead you down the dock. She takes you this way. She says, you don't want to go down there. That's where all the pirates hang out. So come come with me. And so she takes you uh, west. And she points to this large building here with the uh, with the big uh, water wheel. She says, well, that's, that's Wetfoot's, Wetfoot's carpentry there. If you want to you want the best boat made? You talk to Gilly. She she can help you out. And she takes you down the dock here. Um, this spot, she doesn't really point out number five. Um, but you do see a number of, of I, I don't want to say swarthy looking individuals there, uh, but they definitely look like hired swords outside. Um, sign on that building? There's no sign on the building. Uh, it look, looks like kind of like a bunkhouse. You know, there's like a ton of guys there. Uh, Sabina, what's in that building there? This one? Yes. Oh, that that place is owned by Soren Corallo. That's where a bunch of his men stay. Soren, he he he's heads one of the gangs in town. Which one? Boy, you have a lot of questions. They're called the Blightmoor Trading Concern. But they don't do much in the way of, of stealing. They they usually uh, fence all of the stuff for the river pirates. That's how they make their money. Thank you. Who do they sell that to? Oh well, they got. I, I well, there's a guy. His name's something like Manfree, and he p puts it on his ship, and, and then it's gone. I don't know what he does with it. They go down river or something. I guess so. I don't know. But anyway, this is a place you're gonna want to know. And she points out building eight. And there's a sign outside. Uh, this is an aged looking shack. It looks like it's one of the original buildings here in town. And on the sign, uh, there's a mortar and pestle. And scrawled in a rough script reads the word lubber warts. Uh, she says, if you get sick, you need to go talk to them. Lavina, Lavinia, she, uh, she's, a, she's a healer, but it costs costs a lot of gold but they're they're nice enough they're nice enough and she comes to this point and directly ahead of you um, you see a strange looking building there's a sign outside named Dr it says driggle draggle yes uh, it's an octagonal wooden building that has been reinforced with bronze plates on each of its eight sides. There's a massive chimney that protrudes from the center. And Sabina says there's some weird stuff that goes on in there. Sometimes loud pops and bangs. And there's these gnomes that live there. I don't know what they do, but it's... It, um, they kind of uh, int um, intel piece of that. Out. Kind of make an check to figure out what, what they're doing yeah, in there. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead and make a check if you want. 19. Gnomes are known as kind of tinkers and inventors, you know, so they're, they're kind of, these guys definitely fit that stereotype. Um, she says they, they, it's a business, you can go in there and check it out. I, I don't like to go in there though because, uh, <coughs> I borrowed a few things from him. I tend to give it back, but uh, they kind of got mad at me last time. Um, but they're nice folks. They're nice. So she turns down this way, heading south, 
And to the left here at building 10, it's the largest building in Quag Cove. And there is a sign outside with a bathtub and tentacles coming up out of the bathtub. And written in an elaborate script, it says, the Odiug's bathwater. They spelled that. Odiug? Yeah. O T Y U G H. This building appears to be completely out of place here in town. It would be that big one here? Yeah. So that one has no number. Uh, that's a barn. It's directly across. It's it's where you can stable your horses okay. if you wanted from for the for the if you get a room here. Uh, this place this place appears completely out of place for this community. It's the only building that has square edges on every corner. It's in immaculate condition. Um, it has elaborate scroll work carved into the front face of the building. The shutters are carved to appear to be interwoven dragons while closed and griffins in flight while open. The entire building boasts a fresh paint of whites, golds, and reds. On a sign hanging above a richly decorated front door shows the sign I described to you, a bathtub with tentacles creeping out. The words, Odeog's bathwater. The opulence of the Odeog's bathwater makes this establishment seem out of place in Quag Grove. Across from the dock, or across from the inn, I'm sorry, is a large barn where horses can be boarded and extra provisions are kept for the kitchens. Um, you see there are seven guards on duty at the barn right now. At the barn? There's no one outside the inn right now, but I mean they can look straight ahead at the inn and they can see what's going on, you know. But there's seven guys there. They they kind of eye you, but they don't, and they all seem to wear kind of a uniform. But nothing that we've seen on the guards at the bridge or no the, guy, the other guys. These guys um, and this this bunkhouse here, they they just appeared like you know pirate scum. And what about the guys outside? Uh, uh, Sword and Corellos. Oh, the, the the bunkhouse there at number yeah. five? They appear to have the same similar uniform on. Okay. Um, so they're not exact. Um, some of them are more disheveled than others, but um, Soren Corallo seems to really keep a, a more tight ship than the uh, the pirates, so to speak. She goes, well, here's the Odeog's bathwater. If you guys want a room... Or I could show you around some more if you want. What do you know of the... Can you give us a layout of the land around us? What do you mean? Uh, the area outside of the town. I don't go outside of town. Okay. There's some nasty things out there. Where can we find Brother Gore? Brother Gore? Why would you want to meet him? Do you know of him? Well, everyone knows him. He's well, crazy. Where would we find him? Who's looking for him? She says, well, he lives in a hut. And he, she points out towards that island. Can we see it from where we're at? Uh, well, it's like I said, it's it's, it's the one place that is lush and overgrown and green and alive. He's on that smaller island. Yeah. Uh, is there a way what's, to get on that island? What's the best way to get down to ground level from here? Uh, well, come follow me. Well, do we want to check in first at the hotel, or still want to walk around more? Yeah, they're good. All right, take us on. All right, so she she backtracks this way, and directly in front of you at, at building 11, um, you can see to the south of the building, there's an open-air forge. And at the forge there, there's a dark-haired dwarf. He's got fierce eyes. He's just hammering away, crafting on a... On a, on a uh, large anvil. He's got a blade, braided black beard. Um, he's just pouring with sweat because you know he's got a forge going and it's already very hot in the swamp. Uh, behind him, you can see uh, neatly organized racks of weapons in various states of fabrication. 
uh, neighboring the forge, this building, actual building number 11, um, is a wide building constructed of cypress, of course, and branded in dwarvish runes along the front. Do you want to speak dwarf here, you dwarves? Uh, you guys immediately recognize these runes as invocations for luck in business. Uh, it's outside the front door. Reads a sign that says Ragabrash's Rusty Axe. Written in heavy block script. She says, yeah, if you ever want anything made, these guys, these guys make all kinds of great stuff. In fact, don't tell them, but they made this dagger. And she pulls out a dagger from her waist. Do you have to detect magic? Is he cast detect magic for free for an age? No. That's no, not a bad fight. Should do that. Huh? Don't do that yet. Do what? No, no. Did you pray for that? Whoa. Yeah? Of course I did. Um, she points, a, Brother Dwarf. Huh? Then I go take a quick look at what the dwarf is doing. Uh, he's crafting he's, swords. Talk to our brother. Hey, can we tell if he's a hill or a mountain dwarf? He is a he's mountain dwarf. Mountain dwarf. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he's a mountain dwarf. Kind of swords. Long swords. Is, you're gonna go up to him then. Yeah. Okay. Does he uh, yeah. make armor? You gonna ask him? Yeah. Hey, hello, brother dwarf. He looks at you and looks you up and down. If you want something? Talk to Hogrim inside. I'd like to talk to you. Where's the best place to get some good drink here? Go talk to Marhilda inside. She makes the best drink. Huh? He just thinks about drinking all the time. Don't mind yeah. him. I just uh, Hey, I've got a lot. Of, I've got a lot of work to do here. So if you want to buy something, go talk to Halgrim. Uh, just looking at your craft. Finally, feels good to see somebody knows what he's doing in this place. <sighs> Again, if you, if you, I got so much work to do. Go talk to Halgrim. Fine, thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, whatever. Let's go inside. Check the shop out. I don't think there's some armor. All right, so you guys going to go inside of Ragabrashes? Sure. Does All right. Go in? Huh? Does Sabina go in? No. She goes, I I'll wait out here, I think. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll be back in like 10 minutes. And you can see she grabs this post here and swings underneath the dock. Oh, so she's gone before we can kind of say anything to her. So she's gone. You want to shout out at her? Or? No. Yeah, she's she's hand, I give her okay. Oh. Pocket. I drop it in the pocket. So know. Okay. So she swings underneath the dock, though you don't hear any splash or anything below. Can I peer over the edge see if I can see where she went? You look over and it's it's foggy down there. You can see the bottom, but there's nothing in the water 15 feet below. So she must be hanging on the bottom of the deck. If you if there's a light source down there, could you see through the fog? I mean it's daytime now, it's just gray. It's overcast. It's always overcast here though. Because yeah, yeah. I see the on the Because if I cast light on the thinking maybe. If I cast light on something that yep. he shines like a light down there. Yeah, it's still mirror and then you just go to the edge to see something. You wanna do that? Yeah. I have All right, light. So you you lower the mirror, hang on one second Josh, and it looks like there are kind of narrow planks and handholds and runners that run all over underneath this area. Well hopefully she'll be back. So, So you guys want to go in, go ahead and go inside Ragabrashes? Sure. Yes. All right, so when you walk in, you immediately notice that um, the room is divided into basically two, they're, 
it's very obviously very very organized who've ever run in this place there is an area for armor um, there's an area uh, where you can see there's a bunch of leather work being done um, and fletching being done and there's an area where they're selling weapons and you immediately see a female dwarf she says oh customers you're new here my name is Marhilda Marhilda Braid Brew I can I can get you guys the finest finest mead in all of Quag Cove maybe in all the world all right now we're talking That's business claim. I just finished my latest batch all right are you interested very interested oh you'll have to come down to the muck spot with me then all right We'll, we'll go down later. Right now, what can I do for you guys? What kind of armor do you have? Um, they sell any light or medium armor. There's not much call for heavy armor in the swamp. I'd like to take a look at their long swords. Okay. See what they got. Just to make excellent quality standard. It's all excellent quality. These guys, these dwarves, are very, very skilled. So how uh, did you end up here? Uh, uh well, you place for our kind. Yeah, really you can talk to Hautgrim about that if you want. <laughs> He's not very chatty. Oh, you mean, you mean Gromley? Gromley outside, he, yeah, Grumbly, he, did, yeah. he doesn't like people very much. Hautgrim, he's, he kind of, uh, he's kind of our uh, patron, if you will. Came here with him, and he's taught us everything we know. And just then, a door in the back opens, and out comes an older dwarf. Um, he's dressed very well. He's got a couple of axes at his waist, and he smiles when he sees you. He says, "Oh, customers! We haven't seen new customers come through here in quite some time. Perhaps there's something I could do for you." I'm looking for uh, some hand axes. Hand axes, yes. I've and got a large supply of hand axes. And your uh, wife here? Uh, wife? Marhilda is not my wife. She's much too young for me. And Marhilda comes over to uh, comes over to uh, the barbarian, and she kind of throws her arm around you. Will you be coming drinking with us tonight? Of course. All right. Uh, well, well, hold on. I guess you guys haven't met met the patrons there at the uh, Muck Spout yet. You may not want to go there. I don't know. I bring them free booze all the time, so they, they like me. I don't know what they're going to think of you two, though. I, uh, I asked uh, Joe uh, to show me the finest of the Oh, cool. He comes over and he says, Now, uh, Gromley crafts all of our blades. And he's quite skilled. I, I would be hard pressed to pick one that's better than another because he puts a great deal of effort in each one that he crafts. And there's probably eight to ten long swords there, all. So, so I asked him how much. Uh, they charge fifty percent higher than whatever's listed in the player sheet. For everything. For everything. I just looked it up. Is it a uh, whole fine quality? Well, it's all dwarven. Craft. I mean, it's all good quality stuff. Sure. I think for a while Take care of this thing, and it will guarantee not to rust in the swamp. So, what's uh, what are the hand axes look like? The dwarven style hand axes. Is a plus one magical, or is that because? Yes, plus one means it's plus one to hit and plus one damage magical. Okay, so it's not because of the craft. Right. They've done away with masterwork stuff. So it's uh. Each weapon seems to be highly decorated. You can see that. Um, uh, Gromley has even etched runes into the lengths of the blades and um, folded each of the, the pommels very, very carefully. They're oftentimes set with you know, wolves' heads on the, on the guards or dragons' wings as guards. He puts a lot of effort into all, even each of his weapons. I ask our dwarf, uh, any of the uh, runes say anything about justice or anything related to terror? Um... Well, I certainly could have some. Justice is kind of something we don't talk about much here in Quag Cove, but uh, I could certainly have something uh, commissioned for you. It would take a week or so to build. 
about her brewing techniques. Well, that's a secret. I'm I'm a fellow brewer. Oh. So maybe we could trade some secrets. Well, she she goes and pours you a cup and she hands you it. She says, "If you can brew something this good, maybe I'll share something with you." She hands you this mug of of mead. All right. Take a sip it's on every ingredient. <laughs> It's fine, fine brew, fine brew. And it is, it is exceptional, like very, very good. <laughs> Never. I'm a dwarf. <laughs> Get drunk. Is there anything else we can do for you guys? Oh, they sell. Do you smell, sell small, weapons and armor. Small transportable kegs of this. Uh, not really. I, I would have to have uh, uh, Gilly Wetfoot make me a few. The carpenter. Typically, it doesn't last that long anyway. You've probably got a well, water stream. You can at least take some, some way. Yeah. Can I buy some now? Well, yeah. You want to fill a water skin, I'll charge you 15 gold. All right. I'll take a Here's your Here's the water skin. All right. So she fills it up for 15 gold. It better be the best dime forever. That it's price. very good. Things in the quag are oftentimes a little bit more expensive, but, you know, resources are tough to come by these days. Is it better than what one could find at the uh, Tewok's Bat Water? Well, he has his stuff brought in from out of town, but I still stand my my brew up against anything he serves there. Well, then we'll meet you at the Muck Water later. Now, like I said, may not want to go there until you get the all clear from one of the pirates. They don't tend to like uh, strangers coming around too much. They've had... A, a few too many problems with some bounty hunters coming to town, acting like uh, acting like they wanted to join their crew. Oh, we don't want to join their crew. And you definitely probably don't want to go there. Yeah, I'm allowed in there because I bring them booze. I asked a male dwarf if any orcs have been through trying to peddle high-end equipment. Houtgrim? You ask Houtgrim that? Yes. Uh, I, not too many orcs. There's some half-orcs here in town, but you know, most of what they come bring here in town, uh, they've raided from neighbor, neighboring settlements. And where can I find them? Uh, the pirates? The orcs. Oh, the half orcs. Oh, yeah. uh, they're down probably in the muck spot or down on the wharf with uh, the the river pirates. Is that that building you get there if you go straight through coming in town? That big warehouse? Yeah. Yeah, the warehouse is actually owned by the BTC. But the docks are all, that's all Lasher Gang territory. So, who is the leader of Lasher Gang? Leader of the Lasher Oh, uh, that's a guy, that's a fellow named uh, Lash Ragnar. What's his deal? What's his deal? I don't know. He tends to keep to himself. I mean, if he's not out raiding, he's at the mug spout. Um, if you want to talk to him, you have to talk to uh, his bursar first. What's his bursar's name? Gibbs. Who's keeping order in this place? Well, it's there's kind of a you know at one time this place was run. There were eight or ten different pirate captains, and then there was the BTC. Uh, but when Soren Corallo took over the BTC, he uh, he'd gotten pretty tired. He thought it was really bad for business having too many pirate captains. Because every so often, one of the pirate captains would decide that they should run Quag Cove, and then a bloodbath would happen. And every six months or so, there would be this great upheaval, a bunch of people would die, and then everything would go back to the way it was. So about two years ago, Soren, when he took over the BTC, he, he decided enough of that. And uh, the next day, Lash Ragnar was the only captain alive, and now he commands all the pirates. 
the Sauron's pretty much. You know, well, he calls the shutter, shuts it down again. Yeah, but I th he kind of miscalculated a bit. He thought that that a number of the pirates would join the BTC afterwards, mm -hmm. but instead, instead they all joined Lash. So. The, the pirates, there's probably 150, 200 pirates I mean, if they're all in port here. Whereas the BTC might be able to muster about 50 people, 50 soldiers. So there's kind of a tenuous relationship between the two. But uh, I think that uh, I think that Soren calls most of the shots only because Lash, Lash is only he only seems to care much for about plunder. He doesn't seem to care much about power. So, I guess in so far as that, um, Soren's big gambit paid off. I mean, it's been two years and we haven't had we haven't had a great upheaval in all of that time. There hasn't been a bloodbath in that time. So what brings dwarfs to this area? Yeah. I mean, Business opportunities. It's good to see our, our fellow kind here. There are much plunder to be had around here. Feels like we, we've seen a few burned out villages on our way down here. Yeah, well, the pirates are having to sail further and further out. Yeah, I was about to say that's not very good. That's not a very smart business move there to destroy your supplier base. If you can see. Well, um, about ninety-five percent of what we craft goes straight to the pirates. Uh, they tend to run through weapons like like mead. They're not very careful with their weapons. They don't take care of their weapons, and you know, well, it's good for business. They know the first thing about that. So. Say again. They're not dwarves. They would not know the first thing about caring for weapons. That's so. right. Instead, they're those filthy humans. <laughs> All the present humans are accepted, right? <laughs> Lucky you. Already. Has everybody bought everything they want? No. Uh, it was pointed out to be here by Sabina. Which number? Thirteen. Yeah, I don't know if you want to go there though. They don't. Is there muck water? The muck spout. Is there room to be had there? Um, I, well, I. They don't really rent. There's rooms there, but they don't really rent. Who should rent the other place? Well, we'll get the lay of the land, and maybe we'll see you there. Maybe yeah, not. I tonight, don't go there. That place is a, a filthy mess. Uh, Marhilda likes to go because I was talking Marhilda. Oh, Marhilda. Well, well Marhilda likes to go because, <clears throat> well, she's young and. She likes to have fun, and the pirates tend to uh, tend to like her. Maybe she, you know, she might be able to set up a meeting for you with Gibbs. He basically runs runs all the business affairs for uh, for the pirates. So if you want to meet Lash, you go through Gibbs. You want to buy stuff, you go through Gibbs. And they usually meet at the, at the muck house. Yeah, um, about we'll keep that in mind. Thank you very much for your hospitality. What about the brother Gern? Where do you find that fellow? Is he about brother Gern? He goes to the window in the back of the shop and he points down to that island down there. It's right down oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strange fellow. How do we get there? Is there a raft or something? Uh, well, if you if you go down if you go down here, uh, he's pointing to the other island. Um, down there on Skid Row, um, there's a few canoes at the north end of that little island that. Okay. You might be able to, to rent from those folks. Do you know if he's home right now? I don't want to get all the way there for him. I, think. I try not to. Uh, I try not to know what that guy's up to. What's wrong with him? He just makes me nervous. Did he do anything? It's just. Has he made enemies here? No. No. He just, he's just a little off, you know? Yeah, and I, you know, I, I like I like a good conversation now and then. I enjoy, I enjoy the company of good folks, but uh, 
I don't like it when people talk like one inch from my face and hang all over me. Particularly humans and half elves. Fair enough. Yes, he's a half elf. He's a very old half elf. What time of day is it? Um, well, it's afternoon. It's always been afternoon. Yeah, why not? It's hard to tell in this area anyway because it's so gray and overcast. So where do we want to go? Well, let's you go back outside and see if this uh, uh, Sabina. Sabina shows up. Though it's not mentioning her name inside the store. <coughs> what well, didn't you just mention her name inside the store? <laughs> um, outside of character. <laughs> you raise your hand. Outside of character. We used let's to have those, those little flags, remember? Yeah. Let's, let's, go all, let's go outside and we'll s pick a direction to go to. Maybe we'll find the canoes. Yeah, let's say let's go see if our going as there is the reason we came all the way down there. You haven't heard any birds. There's a lot of insects. Buzzing, biting insects everywhere you go. Um, something else that you note is that it seems like most of the, the filth of, from the town, waste and everything, is just dumped right into the water below. So there's kind of a pungent odor the town has as well. I that from the water she's using to make her food. Yes, of the special unique. Yes. <laughs> um, so you go outside, and outside you see Sabina, and holding her hand, there's a very young half orc girl. Um, she looks like she can't be any more than six or seven years old. She's clutching a um, a little teddy bear. Here she is. She's got a little teddy bear in her hand. And um, she sees you guys, and she immediately pulls her little bear close and drops her head down, and, and Sabina's holding her hand, and she goes, God, you guys were in there that long time. Well, we've got grown-up stuff to talk about. Grown-up stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, are you guys ready? I was going to take you down <coughs> to the... To the island down here, wasn't I? While yes. We're in, while we're in there, I meant to pay for the dagger that she took. Oh, okay. And so I want to let her know, don't do that again. Do what again? Of course I paid for it. Well, I paid for it too, so. Oh, well, that was nice of you. So, but, uh, you need to protect yourself. So. Yes, yes. Be good. I'm going to ask her who her friend is. Who's your friend? Oh, this is Little Fleet. Little Fleet. She doesn't talk much, though. Little what? Little Fleet. She lives down on there with you two? Yeah, yeah. She hasn't been here very long. Othris found her wandering around in the swamp. Who does? Othris. Othris. Who's that? Uh, he's a guy. He lives down there on Skid Row. Um... He, uh, he's called Othris the Hunter. Uh, you know, they have a lot of problem with Odiugs, ghouls, and stuff down there, and he pretty much uh, keeps uh, keeps those things at bay. By but down there, do you mean literally down there? Yeah, yeah. He lives down on this island here with the with those folks that that uh, couldn't afford to live on the docks. Is a subpoena human? Yeah. Is she really? She looks like a human. She doesn't have pointy ears or tusky teeth. Wouldn't she be old enough to have a beard even if she was a dwarf? So she begins taking you down past area 11, or I'm sorry, 12, number 12 there. And it's <coughs> much like um, Odium's bathwater. This is a lavish two-story home. Um, and it looks new, like a new construction. Um, and uh, Sabina says, yeah, that's Soren Corallo's house. Probably don't want to go there. And when you look over, there are some guards outside. Is that 11? 12. Oh, okay. And once you reach the stairs that lead down 
to uh, that island there, you immediately start smelling. Um, there's a breeze blowing in your face there, and and there's something coming from area 16 that smells delicious. So it kind of overpowers that uh, that awful smell from below. You are in the fog, but up on the docks, it starts to thin out a bit. So instead of a 30-foot uh, view, you can see about 60 feet. Um, and you can see across at number 16, it's an open awning, f air, open air fish market. Uh, but right in the middle of it, you can see a woman. She's got a number of large black kettles on fire, uh, you know, burning on over fires, and and she's cooking up food. Um, and there's a number of kind of young children there who have gathered, and she gives them each small bowls of food, but doesn't appear to charge them anything. So what is this? What is that area over there? Sabina. Oh, that's just the fisherman's wharf. Um, that's uh, that. Uh, Tamis Radil and his wife. They're super nice. Melina is his wife's name, and she makes the best food. What was the last name? Radil. People do eat fish to catch in that water. Huh? People eat the fish they catch in there. They eat the fish. They eat the gators. They eat all kinds of things they catch in there. There's even crayfish and crab that come in and, you know, one man's garbage is another man's treasure, they always say. Are there any fishing boats around the docks right now? Um, yeah, there's a number of canoes tied up to this, this, this southern dock here. Uh, but she says all of those are owned by Tamas, but he loans them out to the folks there on Skid Row. Says, we all got to eat, you know. So you call Skid Row that big island? Yeah. That's pretty much all the folks that won't either join the pirates or join the BTC. So I would like to go up to Molina and I say, it looks like you're feeding a lot of people. So you're going to like actually walk around over here? Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, there's a small shack that's built on to the northern end of this awning. Then you have Molina's little cook area. And then all the way on the south there, um, you see a man he's, who's butchering a pair of alligators. There's an unusual odor that permeates the area. It's not a fishy odor that you would expect at a fisherman's wharf, but uh, the odor of cooking spices, and it smells delicious. Um, a slender woman... Her brown hair pulled back in a bun with a long, sunken face and lines that show her age stirs a pair of giant kettles heated over an open flame, um, a bubbling stew in each of them. Behind her, strips of alligator meat fry on large iron plates. Um, though her face is kind of hard and she's kind of thin-lipped, um, she beams when she sees you and smiles at you and asks if there's something that she can do. As she hands out bowls of stew to some some homeless children who have gathered around. I think it looks like you're feeding a lot of people. Oh well, yeah, but there's there's plenty to go around here, and you can see there's a there's a sign above a couple barrels. Uh, one sign reads "Crawdads five for a copper," and then scrawled on the side of another barrel it says "Crabs three coppers each. You fish them out." How much for the gator? Well, we sir, I, I make the gator myself. Uh, we got spicy alligator gumbo and fried alligator. What, what are you looking for? Some fried alligator. I think the gumbo sounds good. She sells the, the strips of alligator meat, big strips of alligator meat for two silver. So I asked for a plate of gumbo and some strips, and I just give her a bowl. Okay. And they, she sells boiled crayfish, boiled crab, fish gumbo, spicy crab cakes. Um, and she sells crab and alligator sandwiches, though the bread is rather, looks rather hard. They don't have much in the way of, uh, you know, flour here to make good bread. But, um, I wouldn't fetch my coins too much around there. And she also sells... 
She also sells fried bread that's been fried in all the juices from the alligator meat. I'll give her a gold for a piece of the uh, fried alligator and a piece of the bread. All right. And then change, she can just give, uh, feed the ki keep feeding the kids. All right, yeah, thank you very much. What are crab cakes around? Crab cakes. Oh, well, the spicy crab cakes are three for five silver. cakes there. Uh, there is uh, Sabina and her friend want anything to eat? Oh, yeah, of course. And Mal Molina says, oh, don't, don't worry about it, Sabina. You know, you can have whatever you want. And uh, poking their head around out from behind one of the kettles, you see uh, you see the smallest little person you've ever seen in your life. None of you guys have really ever been around halflings before, since there's not a halfling in the group. But you see a little halfling. Um, right behind one of the kettles. And uh, the little halfling is kind of chewing on a piece of alligator. And and Sabina kind of waves to him. But this, this halfling is probably no more than a foot tall. And and uh, Sabina says, "Hi, Nugget." Quarterling. Molina is a human, right? Yeah. And and Molina says, "Yeah, there there are actually a lot of children here in town. Um, we all need to eat." Keep up the good work you do. No. Who's that Nugget fellow? Oh, Nugget, he's... His parents had come come here, um, but passed on from disease. Uh, and Sabina says, yeah, he now lives with us. Where do you live? Oh, here or there. Anywhere on there in the dark? Yeah. Where you sleep? Here and there. Wherever we need to. Is disease prevalent in this area? So far, everyone that you've come across has a cough, a boil, a festering wound. Something is wrong with everybody here. Why are there so many kids here? Well, we've had a, a lot of pirates come through, and a lot of pirates die. And, um... A lot of pirates, a lot of women bring you through the walk-in. Well, lots of a little bit of everything. Bina says. Um, do you guys want to stay here and eat more, or are we going to move on? You can look across. There's at number 15, and it's kind of an unusual looking place. It's a uh, attached to the docks there at number 15. You can kind of see an unusual looking building. The, uh, the northern part of that building is a two-story home. The southern part of the building is a one-story home. So it's a tri-level home. Um, and then it leads out onto a dock. And you can kind of see there's an oval-shaped construction in the dock, set into the dock, but you can't really make out what that is from where you're standing. Melina? Yeah. Melina says, yeah, that's the brand. Um, that's uh, a lot of pit fighting happens over there. It's run by uh, uh, an elf, a, a drow, if you believe it, in this place, uh, named Pyramus Nor and his wife. But uh, he's got he's got some slaves that he fights, and there's all kinds of betting that goes on. Pyramus? Pyramus, yeah. What was that at? Number 15. 
I don't tend to go there myself. It's not really my thing. Do you say slaves? Yeah, they tra the pirates bring a number of slaves into town, and Pyramus buys a lot of them. Well, most of them don't live very long there in the pits. Everybody's fine with that? Well, there's not much that anyone can do about it, but I mean, me yeah. personally. Let's just let it go for now. For now. We're on our mission. So where do you guys want to head? Uh, to 18. So you're going to go to 17 first. Yeah. All right. Canoes, I guess, to get there. A wide set of stairs leads down to a muddy island where several grass huts, lean-tos, and tattered tents are gathered. Uh, a light fog floats in from the south, obscuring a cabin at the far end of the island where a pair of alligator hides are stretched on a wooden frame. Several people, muddy and wearing tattered rags, eye you all nervously as you approach. And Sabina, she's kind of tagging along. She still has that little half-orc girl with her. Again, the half-orc girl hasn't said a single word. Um, and if any of you guys even look at her, she kind of recoils away. I heard we could rent some canoes here. And you, what you see is you can... See, standing around, there's all, there's a number of people standing. They all have spears. Not really at the ready, but they're all armed with spears. Um, at least most of the people are. Um, you've got uh, a pair of halflings here. Adult halflings. Uh, you see a half-orc. Um... Just kind of standing in the group there. He's filthy and dirty himself. Yeah, down on the island. Uh, and this is at, like as you guys are coming down the stairs, a lot of these people come out. They've got spears in hand, and they kind of gather in this area, like almost like they're used to there being problems coming down from the docks, and so they've kind of come together in a you know out of protection. Um. All right. Um, is you see, you see a, a uh, huh? Is that island more at water, or water level? Yeah, it's down. It's very <laughs> muddy and disgusting down here. It's a, it's called Skid Row for a reason. You see a a, a young mountain dwarf female, um, sitting in front of this lean-to right here see a very, very old woman, um, and she's just kind of, she's got a threadbare shawl pulled around her. her, her clothing is just tattered rags, and she just sits there rocking, kind of muttering to herself. And off by himself, um, who's just kind of like, kind of checking you guys out, there's a wild-haired dwarf, um, he looks like a hill dwarf from a distance, you can't really be, te really tell. But um, he's got scars on his face. Uh, he doesn't have a shirt on. And he's just kind of looking at you guys. He doesn't have a weapon out either, unlike these others. Uh, but there's a number of people there, some humans. They're all looking at you, waiting to see what you're going to do. It's not, that, that's you in 100 years if you keep drinking too much. <laughs> ah, never. You don't know she that young. Hey, can uh, you grab me a, a watermelon? Are they in our way? Or yeah, they're kind of in your way. I mean, they they look like they look like you're there. I mean, they, they look at you as though you're there to do no good. We wish nobody any buy water. I say to the group, we wish them no harm. We just would like to rent some canoes. I walk straight up to the half orc, straight chest, right they're in front of them, like that close. Yeah, I didn't say anything. Okay, so the half orc, um, again, he's pretty filthy individual. Um, but this one thing that stands out about him, thank you very much. The one thing that stands out about him is hanging around his chest. He's got a wooden, hand carved, holy symbol. What's the symbol? Do we recognize the holy? It would be a religion check. And when you do that, 
He doesn't flinch. He doesn't snarl. He doesn't do anything. He just looks at you. Is that a 15? 19? Um, his, the holy symbol he wears around his neck is a holy symbol to soon. Soon is the god of love. Um, the dwarf, the female dwarf, steps forward and says, "You want canoes? Uh, who are you, and why are you here?" Uh, business is our own. Where are you gonna go? I don't, I don't know you guys. I don't know if I. No, those are our only canoes. We won't even leave your sight. Just How much for a canoe? Address. To buy one. About two gold. I'll give you four gold to rent them when we need them for the net for our stay here. All right. Four gold. So if you lose them, or we lose them, you can replace them. She kind of looks at you suspiciously, sizing you up. She says, okay. People begin to slowly straggle back. Although they don't, they, they each return to kind of their individual huts and so forth. Um, though they don't necessarily put their weapons away. The only one that didn't carry a weapon was the half-orc. What was the female's name? She says, my name is Tano. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the half one. Tilly. <laughs> Tilly Drabardi. Does she walk away? Does she have a nice beard? Yeah, he walks away. She's a mess. Does she have a beard? Yes. Uh, I want to call her a What's uh, one like you doing in a place like this? Well, uh... Make a persuasion check. You're gonna need a. She doesn't trust you guys. You gotta be uh, a little bit, a little bit dapper. Oh, 20. 20. This is uh. Work my lines. Well, the uh. I guess you could say I was stolen. Eventually, eventually, uh. When I was brought here, that jackass Pyramus Nor bought me. Had me fighting in that pit for five years. Until I could save enough money to buy myself. And then, by then, the pirates wanted me to join them, but I certainly wasn't going to throw myself in with that lot, so I moved down here. <clears throat> my husband, uh... My husband, Rye, he, uh... He's been pretty sick, if any one of you guys could do something about that. I don't really have the gold to go to the Love Rewards. What's, uh... Can I see, you? Can I see your husband? Yeah, can we see... Where's he at? She takes you over to a grass and mud hut, and inside there's a human male, a young human male, who's lying there. He's drenched in sweat, he's coughing. Um, you can make a medicine check on him. I read a humor. He's a good man. Besides that, Salty is the man who has not known dwarven love. Uh, ten. ten medicine check. 20. Ten. Ooh, twenty-one. Um, he's he's got plague fever. Is that what's called plague fever? Hold on. Phil fever was the third edition. Sewer plague is what it's called these days. Sewer plague. Would, uh, and it's rather advanced. Would lesser restoration? Lesser restoration would clear it, yeah. So I'm going to cure or cast lesser restoration on him. Okay. And his fever, obviously through the magics, his fever immediately begins to dissipate. And <coughs> um, Tilly, she kind of grabs you by the shoulder and laughs. And her husband immediately begins to recover. He still has four levels of exhaustion to rest off, but um, the fever breaks like that. And, um, and she thanks you. She's like, you know, I'm sorry. I doubted you. It's just 
sometimes the pirates they come down here and they start trouble. You know, we gotta be we gotta be ready. Um, this is like you have no idea. It's just not something that happens here. This this you know, except for maybe uh, uh, you know the, the fisherman's wife up there, Melina. You know, there's really no one in this place that really sticks their neck out for anyone. I say, well, now you know that we're not pirates, but uh, he's still pretty weak. Make sure he rests for another week or so. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I really appreciate this. Uh, I'll tell, I'll be sure to tell Othrus that you're, that you're good, but good with me. Glad to help. We want to make sure the pirates don't know that we're so charitable. I mean. Yeah, if if just you just keep this to yourself, <laughs> and we help. Or at least you can tell Othrus if he seems to be in charge, but maybe not. Othrus was the half orc. Othrus? He's the hunter. Ta Tano is the half orc that he 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 kind of got in the face of. Um, you haven't met Othrus yet. Othrus, he lives in the cabin over there. Uh, he's not home right now. He usually patrols around Quag Cove. Uh, we've had a lot of problems with uh, ghouls lately, and he, he tracks them down and kills them. They come on this side over there? Yeah, yeah. They, You know, the, the people living up there on the docks, they dump everything, all their old food and crap and everything. And, of course, the ghouls, they come around. And, of course, the pirates sometimes drop a body or two in the water and, and so uh, it draws all those ghouls and odi dugs in. That's why around there? Well, with Othrus around, we haven't had to defend ourselves much from the from those creatures, but uh, we've all learned to, to handle ourselves it's because of the pirates. We've had more than one scrape with them. Grab one of the canoes and go see Brother Gorn. So if Do you know when have a problem with both gangs, or is it just the one? The BTC, they, the Blight War trading concern, they don't really, you know, we're not, we don't fall on their radar at all. Mostly just the Lasher gang. Yeah, they, I think they think it's fun to come down here and start, start brawling. Oh. They've been very successful. So... Very you mentioned seeing Othrus, you wanted to go just go right across to the yeah. Brother Gord. When do you think Othrus is going to be back? He usually comes back just before dark. Maybe we'll catch him on the way back. Yeah. And it's Goosey Gordon. And before we leave, we're the one who's looking at Slipper when you go. Oh, she's, she's like, here, let me walk you down to the canoes. Well, what time of day is it? Um, it's, it's starting to get around dinner time. Stopping off and talking. The tavern for dinner. Alrighty. That seems to be what you're worried about. Hmm? He wants his food. What you're worried about for dinner? So as you guys come out of her her little hut, you're gonna walk past that really old woman. Um, she's just she's just jabbering on, and you can see the half orc. Um, the half orc is there, and he's trying to talk her into eating something. And she's very thin from malnutrition. And hey, we ask what's uh, wrong with her. That's uh, just that's just Dan. She uh, she's been down living down here on Skid Row longer than I've been alive. I think she's she's always been crazy. What is she? What is she saying? She just kind of rambles on about the eyes. The eyes? Yeah. What about them? I can we discern anything from my rambling? Like dark eyes or? Um, she she rambles on about um, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. The same kind of rambling that comes in people who have been by blight now? What about the eyes? Are, it's are it's similar, yeah. Are huh? they looking back at her or something, the eyes? Um, every once in a while she'll say something, I can't stop seeing it. I can't stop seeing it. Seeing what? 
she doesn't even and, and she doesn't even register that any of you are there. So she looks pretty unhealthy. She looks very unhealthy, and she's very old as well. We yeah. heard him ramble like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Would cure wounds help her out at all? Is she wounded or? No, she's just just old. She's old. Um, she seems to be uh, completely overcome with dementia, for lack of a better word. And uh, um, you know, this this half orc Tano, he's they have to actually talk her into eating every day. Can we? Can we get around to like the backside to see if she's marked? Yeah, I mean, you'd have to pull her hair back. She's a filthy mess. Do you want to try to do that? Yeah, cautiously. We don't want to like startle her or whatever. We don't want to look like we're trying to assault her or anything, but All right. we'd like to uh, check her. Check her. We'll just announce. We want to check her for a mark. Okay. Um, she's not marked. That's good. Cool. Um, she's got, like I said, she's wearing rags. She's got that shawl covered up, covering her. And once you get real close to her, you notice that she's also got a really dirty rag that covers her own eyes. Is the mark known? Like, everybody in the area knows what it is. They see it, and they're like, oh, you're marked. You want to ask? If I have to. You wouldn't know. I mean, without asking. Who do you want to ask? So she... Like with her, uh, she's got this shawl that's that's pulled up over her and it's wrapped, and just a little bit of her face was showing. But now that you've gotten real close and started looking, you can see she's got rags tied around her her own eyes. Um, and when you guys asked to, to look for a mark, Tano and get, and Tilly were kind of like Mark. Okay, have a look. Is she a human, the old lady? So yeah, she's oh, yeah. him. And then how just turn around and be like, we're looking for this kind of mark. So how was I specifically marked? Did, was, it was, was, was during the night haunt. Did, uh, so, um, how, how did they do it? Did they? You know, once you came out of that night haunt from the first adventure, it was just there. Yep. So is it, so do we know if it's in the same place every time? You don't know. This is your only, your only experience with it. Can we make a knowledge of it? Um, no. I would, I would back his robe a little bit and say, we're looking for a mark like this, and I would do it in front of her to see if that okay. starts her to see it. Okay, you can see that she's, her eyes are covered, though. Alright, so you pull, you start pulling back, and Tilly says, I'm told that when she was younger, she used a dagger and took out her own eyes. That's not good. <laughs> How long has she been here? So no, Tilly. The the dwarf. Um, she she's, she says, eyes, eyes. She's, she's been here, like I said, longer than I've been alive. She looks like she's in her 70s. Say, I can handle it. And still All right, so there's literally just two craters where her eyes used to be. And she's not right. Like, it's just the is eyes. there anybody around town who might know more about her? Um, maybe, maybe uh, over there at Loverwarts, uh, they've been here that long. Do you have any idea what these eyes she's talking about refer to? No, I mean, I've never heard her utter a, a complete sentence. I don't know. I don't know how to break through to her. I mean, it would definitely take some magic, but. You know, we don't really have many in the, way, in the way of magic magic users here in town, except for that Soren Corallo, or maybe that, that creepy Grigri, the pirate Grigri. Uh, Soren's a magic user? Soren, yeah. Soren, yeah, he's he's a sorcerer. That, I mean, you've seen all the dragon motif they got all over the the uh, the Oyod's bathwater there. He's He's uh, a little bit of a snob, if you ask me. He likes things to be 
uh, very richly adorned. Is you know if the Lasher Gang has been using uh, magic? Well, like they were a couple years ago, they recruited this. I don't even want to talk about him. His name's Gree Gree, and you'll see for yourself if you meet him. Gree Gree. Gree Lashers? Yeah. Was was this before that they had their success? It was about about the same time. I think that he showed up in town a little bit after Lash Ragnar showed up in town. Huh. You want to detect thoughts on you? I can't do it. I can't. Anybody of us could maybe probe or mine or something. Detect thoughts. You want to cast detect thoughts on Nan? Okay, Josh. So you sit down in front of Nan, and you begin your spell. And you see, almost like you're—it's it's almost like you're seeing through Nan's eyes. She's a young girl. So this is a long time ago, maybe sixty years earlier, fifty years earlier. Um. You see her exploring the swamp, not far from, like, not far from Quag Cove. Um, and suddenly something comes into view. A silhouette in the fog. Curious man walks up to the silhouette. And turns around. I need you to make a, a wisdom saving throw. Um, 11. <laughs> so when you guys, he's sitting there in front of Nan, just kind of concentrating, and suddenly his hands begin to shake. His whole body begins to, to quiver. Um, Josh, you gaze upon a creature almost as if take all the worst qualities of a hag and merge it with a creature of, of death, an undead creature. And this is what she beheld. And it literally drove Nan insane. Just the sight of this creature drove Nan insane. And she couldn't she couldn't erase it from her mind. She fled the the area. She ran back to Quag Cove. She couldn't get into her out of her mind, so she took a dagger, took out her own eyes in the hopes to to stop this thing from being able to see this thing. But even then, she still relives that moment over and over again in her mind. And suddenly, suddenly, your concentration is broken as you're overcome with fear. You can see ha um, Josh's character, Hagmar, is just shaking. Um, and he kind of stands up and stumbles back. His eyes are huge and his skin is pale as if he, uh, you know, seen something completely hideous. And Hagmar doesn't seem to be, he's just staring at Nan. He doesn't speak, he doesn't do anything, and he's just shaking. Well, that's great. Oh, well, there's two of them. <laughs> Anybody want to read his mind? <laughs> Would I be able to like cast a minor illusion of this like, be like a of like this creature? To no, you're completely mind. frozen in fear. Oh, in the road. Yeah. Are Nan's eyes covered? Oh, yet? Are they still They're still covered. He, yeah. You're gonna start him smacking them around. All right, roll a d4. Snap them in the back and say, "Snap out of it, boy." All right, it takes about two minutes of you shaking him, but he finally starts to calm down, and then you can describe what you saw. Do you really want to show them through a minor illusion what you saw? If I show them through a minor illusion, would they have to make a will save? You won't find out. I'm like, depends on how good he describes this thing in the first place. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll describe it and ask if they want to, if you want me to show them what this creature is. Because I can show it through a minor illusion. I can see. Might as well know what it's about. Okay, so he generates this image. Um, make a religion check. 
All of them? Yeah, anyone who wants to. Ooh. 25. 25 from Josh. So literally what he, he constructs, and it's not going to have the same impact, but a creature that seems part night hag, part sea hag, uh, maybe mix of green hag, but merged with the visage of a lich. Just an unbelievably hideous creature. Um, not so much that, just subtle features that blend in and out. Uh, but you, whatever this creature was, she stumbled across it in the Blightmoor, and it, just seeing it, whoever this was, just seeing it drove man insane and caused her to take out her own eyes with the trying to get the vision out of her head. Well, it looks like the hags are here. And been here a while. Yeah. I'll slap you for showing me that. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you show me that? I need my therapy cat. Uh, our Belladon. Your therapy not, not cat. Not just a list, but it's a therapy cat. <laughs> Don't be touching. We're the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get in some canoes and head over to the nobody's done it already, I'd like to cover a man's eyes. Okay. Just okay. So they're not out of respect. Yeah. <laughs> um, Definitely not. So Tilly's just, uh, Tilly says, that thing is out there. How big was it? So, uh, over six feet tall. No, it's a medium-sized creature, but over six feet tall. I mean, night hags, you fought a night hag, and they tend to be between six and seven feet tall. It could be out there. Oh, wait, wait, stop. Stop the presses. I actually have a picture of it, what Josh describes. How dare I forget this? Shame. <laughs> there you go. artists to do all this work and then I forget. <laughs> now if you just put a beard on it. <laughs> Wouldn't we, know, we, love. we be aware of pretty much True everything love. that happened True in the love. first okay. days of light? Yes, you're completely aware of everything that happened in the first days of Everything we're reading in we would know. Yes. Okay. So there is a particular name that you learned about in the first blood, days of light. Well, it was more the fact that one time he had this guy who herself as a young girl, so she might be among us. Now, you know that's a power of the night hag to disguise themselves as a woman of virtually any age. And we met women of virtually any age. Yeah, there's two right there. So there's Sabina, there's the half orc. That seems to be it. So I was not <laughs> alone anywhere. I guess on the plus side, we're all men, so it's not any of us, right? <laughs> so how Although, although you can do a family. knowledge check, uh, our, I guess, it, yeah, it would be Arcana check. <laughs> 23. Because in the first mod, you also faced a green hag. So the coven um, takes hags of all kinds, uh, but the green hags have the ability to take many different forms. How long has this half well, we been around? We've been yeah. together as a group Tano? The first no, or so. the girls. Oh, the lot less than a year, remember? Has anybody been eyeing him? Or him? Especially her? Um, do a perception check. Because he's got the mark and he's got the seed. One. <laughs> no. <laughs> can, can we make a check? <laughs> Why would you make a check? Because he said so? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, to the canoes. So the water in this area, you know, it's only like 80 feet across or so. Uh, but uh, the water in this area gets relatively deep, eight to ten feet deep in this area. <coughs> but you guys cross over. 
and um, Tilly doesn't go with you guys. He just kind of says, here's the canoes and have fun. She doesn't like Brother Gordon very much. Others oh, come and go. Does he have his own canoe? Or Who? Brother Gorn. Uh, Brother Gorn, well, he's a druid, so he can take shapes, and he doesn't have his own canoe. Um, so just well, but we're as not you guys, taking Sabina with us, are we? No, she won't go over there. Okay. Well, I didn't want to make sure we're not going to try and drag her with us. We don't know how much we want to trust her yet. Um, so, as you guys row across, you can see that there's a campfire ringed by stones, and it burns in a small clearing outside of a thatched hut. Vi trees, vines, and swamp grasses have been allowed to grow so close that the walls of the hut seem to have been enveloped by the growth. So you've got this big wall of trees and vines and undergrowth that kind of makes this U-shape around the hut. So there's a circular opening to the hut that really is all that's, that's visible of this dwelling. There's a dirty leather hide that hangs over a circular opening to the home. Unlike the rest of the Blightmore, the swamp here is alive with insects birds and reptiles. Plants grow tall and lush without the sickly brown blight found elsewhere. <clears throat> However, dozens of tiny creatures seemingly, seemingly made out of undulating mud. And when I say tiny, like some of them are, would be as small as this in my hand. Some of them may be, you know, this big. Uh, but they're roughly humanoid shaped. Um, and the mud seems to just kind of flow and turn and twist all over them. Um, they watch you as you guys come. And they're, they're all over this area. And as you guys row across, more and more of them begin to appear. Uh, their faces are covered in, in sorrow. You know, their, their faces are very long. Their mouths gape. Um, and, but they're all kind of eerily silent. So they just kind of stare at you. Their eyes are long, their mouths are long. And, and if you try to approach any of them, they just literally melt away into the mud and then pop up elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> coming out of the hut, you see this man right here. He's a half-elf of advancing years. He's very old. Um, he comes out and he begins to stomp out the fire with his foot and then he sees you guys. He pulls his foot from the fire as you guys start pulling your canoes up. He's just shy of about five feet tall. He wears robes woven from the vines um, and leans heavily on a staff that has a serpent's head at the top. Um, <clears throat> but as he comes up to you guys, and he kind of moves, walks very fast and deliberately. Uh, I don't know who the first person is on the island, but he walks up to you. Okay, he walks up to you, and he's like this far from your face, and you can tell that he gives, he doesn't give two shits about hygiene at all. He reeks. Um, but his hair is all white. Um, and he makes no real attempt to hide the big bald spot on the top of his head. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, climbing up beside him is a little monkey that uh, he keeps talking to. He's like, yeah, Albert. Albert, I'll, I'll ask him, Albert. Albert. Uh, brother Gorn. Yeah, I'm Be brother. Baroness sends our regards, and I stab him in the arm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> stab him. <laughs> But he keeps looking at the monkey and he's like, stop it! I, I'm, I don't know how they know my name. I, I, I'll, and the monkey's chittering in his ear and he s turns her over and he looks at those little mud creatures. He's like, don't you start on me either. I, Berenice sent you. He's yeah, a good friend. Here, come sit. Come sit around the fire. She sends you her best. Oh, that's very sure. kind of her. And he kind of, he's one of these guys, he kind of squats down at the fire rather than, rather than sitting all the way. Um, and he's got a small black kettle and he's making a little bit of food in it. 
Um, he's like, come sit, sit, sit. You want to sit? I'll sit. I'm going to sit. All right, so you all sit around with him. Um, he leans over and puts his arm around around you, pulls you in close. He's like, so what brings you here? And as, as you guys all sit and become kind of stationary, those little muddy, humanoid-looking things begin to congregate around you guys again. Not, not within arm's reach, but they're all kind of like poking their head up from behind, you know, weeds or up from the sides of trees or... What are those things? Oh, they, these, these are mud spirits. Spirits, spirits of the, of the swamp. Are they friendly? Yeah, they're quite harmless. Not harmless. Are they friendly? Well, they, they're they're very they're easily frightened. Does that make it all your kind of Well, uh, what what brings you here, Beer? He sent you. It's we been many to, years since I've seen her. We come to speak of your mission. Mission. What information do you have? Or what, have you mission gathered? about what? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. What do you want to know about it? What have you found out? <clears throat> now, I've learned much in my years here. Which is why I've moved down to the island here. I try to stay out of everyone's way. I don't want to, you know, much of what I've learned get some nice people harmed, injured, killed. Maimed. As far as what? How far away is it? What? The Blightmoor. Where? Oh, we're we're in the Blightmoor. Hmm. Aren't we just on the edge of it? Well, we're on the edge of it, but we're in it. The Blightmoor's boundaries extend as far as the, the, as the mist. So as long as we're in the fog, we're in the Blightmoor. Yes. He says, these... The Blightmoor was not always like this. This was once once a lush wetland. Sadly, sadly, the hags came and turned it into what you see here. Turned its inhabitants into these... And he, he, he picks up one of the mud spirits. Just, this, this was once a sprite. But no more. He sets it down gently. When did the hags come? Shh. You smell that? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's been eight hundred years. It's been eight hundred years since the hag lich has come. Sure rear the hag lich. She's the one that started it. What was that name? Sure rear? Sure rear. Have you been here? How long have I? I've, mm, I've been here, what, 20 years now? 20 years! Have Can you, you believe the, that? Have you seen the That's hag glitch? It. Can you show him? Like you saw? Yeah. Maybe just trace it in love. Maybe just ask him if he's seen the hag glitch. Yeah, have, have you seen, seen the hag glitch? Yeah, have you seen the hag glitch? I have never beheld this, the hag lich. Would you like to know? <laughs> Would you, have you, do you know what she looks like? <laughs> I know. I've learned from the mud spirits what she looks like. Hideous to behold. The mere sight of her can drive you insane. Oh. Albert. He kind of chitters in in uh, Brother Gwern's ear. And oh, well, he still chitters in Brother Gwern's ear, and uh, Brother Gwern says, "He came here with me. He's my companion." Uh, is that what the monkey said? Yeah. Haglitch is a it's a weird specimen, isn't she? Part glitch, part hag. Wow, well, I've learned much. I come here. The story is a sad one, but not without a way 
to undo everything that you see here. You see, like I said, this was once a lush wetland, and it was once called the Shellacod. It was home to these fey folk that you see here, sprites, pixies, dryads, and even a bronze dragon. Is it still around? Sadly, yes. His name is Volturnus, but he was young then when the Hag Lich appeared. He was young, and he was not strong enough to stop what came next. When Shorir arrived, she was disgusted by all of the beauty that you saw here. And it's, I've been able to just recreate a, a small piece of what Shellacod used to be right here on my island. And again, it is beautiful. It's lush. There's insects buzzing around. There's birds, frogs, all kinds of swamp creatures, snakes, things that you haven't seen. The only thing you've seen in the swamp to this point are all those biting insects constantly harassing you. But she performed a ritual to create what is known as the Tree of Decay. Well, in order to create this place, she had to give up a part of herself. And that is when she stepped from the world of fiends, placed one foot firmly in the world of the dead. Now she walks in both. Well, the beasts of the Shellacod fled, but the sprites and the fey folk and Volturnus, they weren't so eager or willing to give up their home. But the blight soon overcame them. He picks up one of the mud spirits again, and this is what they were reduced to. Sad forms. And sadly, the mud spirits, they, they, don't even, they can't even remember their former selves. Just flashes of memory. The, That's the all they are left. The same fate befell the dragon? Well, worse. worse. You see, Shorir used the power of the Tree of Decay to bind the dragon. And now... He's just a mindless beast who patrols around the Tree of Decay. Who does their bidding? He does their bidding. Worse yet, it's been 800 years since he was taken. He's massive now. Only death awaits anyone who tries to fight that beast. But you see, and he holds up one of the mud spirits, you see. Imagine this. As big as a barn, roughly in the shape of a dragon, mud covering its entire body. It's a horrific scene. How is it that you could create a ace? Druidcraft. So he can only do it to this little island, though. So have you seen any, any other hags here? Well, there, there are others, um, though I, I dare not say, uh, I'm sorry, one second, this work. Um, there are others, but they don't tend to come around Quag Cove often. Do you know how many there are? It seems though, as though there are maybe hundreds. But again, they don't come here often. They go out into the world and do what hags do. But there are worse, worse problems facing the community, believe it or not. Like what? It's actually kind of hard to believe. Sadly, sadly it is true. Are you have trouble with any kind of beasts or foul creatures coming on your island? No. The people no. on the other one said that they were often attacked by such creatures. Not, not here. I have not had problems with beasts. An occasional ghoul will come around. But if you watch the mud spirits, they will be your sign. If they vanish, you know trouble is not far behind. And then what did you do? Just run away? Brother Gorn does not run. I'm sorry, you swim over. I 
I can take care of myself. What, are, are the mud spirits only here, or are they throughout the They're swamp? all through the swamp. They tend, if you go out in the swamp, they tend to follow you around. A few at first, but eventually many. How do we befriend them? Well, I'm afraid that, like I said, they, their minds are, much like the fog outside, are constantly wandering and lost. They are, they're unable to really form a thought of their own. They just kind of are instinctively curious, but very frightened. But again, I have, I have more dire news. What do you know of the locusts of the waste? Whatever you're about to us. They, they are knolls to the north. <laughs> They move down. There's there's highlands that circle the the Blightmoor. They're known as the Gullveg Highlands. Uh, well, these knolls moved into the highlands in the north. Actually, it would be northeast. I apologize. Well, for there's been a time. There was a time where I was friendly with a clan of lizard folk the Drathrishk, to the due east of here. But it's been, it's been weeks since I've heard from them. And I fear that the gnolls have attacked. I don't know what's going on with them, but I, I, I would like you to go to the Drathrishk lizard folk and find out if all is well. I've heard tales that some of the lizard folk are held uh, captive at the brand, falling in debt to Pyramus Nor. But I don't know a little else than that. I just heard from my, my friends here, and his little bird lands in his hand, or a snake comes up to him. He says, these gnolls, they don't kill all that they, uh, all that they attack. They've been taking captives. And that can only mean one thing. A fang of Yinogu. What do you know about? <laughs> a fang of Yinogu. If a fang of Yinogu is, is nearby, the gnolls will take captives so that the fang may deliver the killing blow. And then any hyena that eats from the kill of a fang of Yinogu will turn into a knoll itself. A, f a presence of a fang can lead to a, a startling, startling growth of the knoll's ability to destroy and, and ravage. And I fear that if the knolls have enough numbers, they'll attack this place and kill. Granted, there are some unsavory folk here. There's a small community of good folk as well. Them, we'll make sure to show them the error of their ways. Again, the Drathrishk mounds, they're due east of here through the mud. Mm -hmm. How far away from here? Um, it's about a day's walk. It's 15 miles. Oops, wrong one. Ah. 20 miles due east of Quag Cove. So it'll take about it'll take about a day through the swamp to get there. Slow going through the swamp. I guess we could do a loop tomorrow. But it's it's yeah. So if you visit the brand and the rumors are true, there may be lizard folk there that can tell you more. You think they'd uh, join us in fighting them off and rescuing their people? He speaks. I'm sure that they would guide you there, but the Drathrishk, they're a strange folk, much like lizard folk are. Um, I'm not sure that they would trust you enough to, to venture out there with you. Or if you tell us, tell them to. They may show you the way, but I wouldn't look for them to fight. And again, this is one of those circumstances where if you were a smaller party, sure, they'll help you out. But you're seven, so. Cowards. That's 
why they got took over by the Norse. So you have <laughs> this nice island here. Why, why don't you and the other people swap places and you make the other one nice like this one? Well, then this one will fade. I'm just going to that. <laughs> <laughs> don't be selfish. I'm sure somebody tells you sharing. So what other, uh, <laughs> what other woes are out there? Othris is the one you probably want to talk to more than, than myself. I, my studies have been focused on learning about the history of this place and learning, finding a way of communicating with the mud spirits, um, which I've been able to do somewhat, but it's a slow, arduous process of communicating with them. Now, Othris, on the other hand, has walked these swamps and he knows much. Do a uh do you know where the lair of these hags are? I do not. Do your little friends? Uh, if they know, they haven't been able to communicate it with me. Can I ask how we can destroy the tree of decay? I don't know. I have not learned that. So what have you been doing with your time? <laughs> I've told you much! What is wrong with you? You're just a bit slow, though, my dear. That's only half a page of intel. I've been here for a long time. <laughs> well, if you think you could do better, by all means, move in here and I'll return to the Emerald Enclave. Does Brother Gwen go onto the docks to get resources? Or does someone come out? Oh, no, no, no. I don't go up there. It's a filthy place. Who brings you your, your supplies? What supplies? Food or Looks like food. you can stand a bar of soap. <laughs> I ain't no one to give me food. It's a druid. Okay. He lives off the land. Okay. Can I bring you some soap? <laughs> what, to wash out your filthy mouth? <laughs> Whatever, tree hogger. I am not a hogger of trees. Don't make it. That's the the witch's bark. The witch's bark. What do you speak of? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure. He grabs the elf by the hair, pulls his head down abruptly, kind of like you're like choking on the back of your your shirt, and he's looking at it. I've never seen this before. Let me see it now. Perhaps you should stay here with me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm questioning. A seed of blight. Do you know of anything of it? Well, it's something that is uh, is born from the tree of decay. It creates these cauldrons that the witches use. Would you know how to destroy one? By all indications, they're either destroying the tree of blight or in one of the ways that... Uh, one would go about destroying an artifact. Okay, now that would be... Maybe if the... You could convince the Terrorask to devour the Seed of Blight. It could be destroyed. Or if you could... Yeah, you is it? Convince <laughs> Orcus to use his wand to shatter it. Do you have a plan C? <laughs> do you have a Terrasque around here? I do not. Uh, no, no, no. Is there a village of turtles around? <laughs> if they are, they're all soup now. Do you have, like, do you have communication with Orcus? Orcus? God, no. What's wrong with you? Best friends? You don't get to stay here with me anymore. Go back to the docks. Talk about yeah, Orcus like that. Well, you talked about Orcus? Orcus? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemy. I think we've worn out our uh, information we're going to get. We'll let you know if we uh, come across the, uh, the lizard folk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell them to roll in some patchouli next time. Patchouli? Let's go back to the dance. All right, where do you want to head? Well, I guess it's probably about dinner time. Muck's so we should get to the, uh, to the you want to go to the Muck's Pile? Want to go to Muck's uh, Pile? Yep. 
Hey, as we uh, get we'll the island. Up some trouble. What was her name? Uh, Sabina. No. Are we about? Tilly. She's the one that uh, let us work the canoes, right? Yeah. I gave her four gold. I'll give her uh, uh, two more. Okay. To keep her canoes handy. Okay. All right, so you meet Sabina back on the island, who's kind of running around with Little Flea, and Little Flea, upon seeing you, immediately wilts again. She kind of grabs her teddy bear and You asked Sabina that? Yeah. I don't know. A Othris found her wandering around the swamp. She just said, she was just never said anything. She never said a word, ever. Does anybody have to detect magic? She saw your little illusion. Should I detect thoughts on Lil' Flea? should take her back. Should I? So you found her wandering around the swamp? Well, Othris no. did. I didn't. Yeah, I'll take dots on there. She starts climbing up the walls. <laughs> <laughs> starts speaking backwards. Okay. So um see if you can find anything in the doll too. In the doll. Okay, so you cast detect thoughts on her. And her mind is, is very much like a fog. So do you want to try to probe deeper? Or are you just doing the surface thoughts? So let me look at the thoughts. So you get the surface thoughts um, for free, which seem to be just a jumbled mess. Like her her mind is... It's, Completely chaotic. You can't really make heads or tails out of anything. Well, she's six or seven. She's a half orc, though. Could be a hag protecting her thoughts too. If I plant an axe in her forehead, <laughs> that'll clear her thoughts. <laughs> We're gonna see that real well. That would that would be very kind of you to do that. Oh, we're here to make friends. That make a lot of friends. Cool. Oh, here are spilling over. So, if I go deeper, will she know? Yeah. Well, yeah, she knows you'll be pulling at her brain. Unless you can bring thoughts to her to the surface. Remember, like we talked about. She's a six-year-old. What's she gonna do? Yeah, she doesn't Seven. speak. She's not gonna tell on you. <laughs> well, you hey, know, if we try to take her where, that brings some thoughts <laughs> to the top. She just goes. <laughs> I'll make a. Are you detecting thoughts? Yeah. I will uh, kneel down next to her and, and ask her what her bear's name is. Alright, so um, she kind of tightly closes her eyes and recoils away. And what you see is Othris handing her this little doll. So, like, the doll came from Othris. Can I speak while I'm concentrating? Yes. Say, um... You. So, where are you from? Um, and then just a jumble of thoughts. Like, she, she just can't seem to... The only thing you can really tell is that she really wants to flee. She wants away from you. I'm gonna ask her if I can see her bear. And she clutches it tight. Her eyes are clutched closed. I'm gonna make a pull for it. Just a not gentle, not a not a rip it from her arm. Just a gentle tug on it. Okay, and she to see if she'll loosen up a little bit. No, she won't. But can I ask her what her name is? Is it Orcish? You can try. Okay. So you say in Orcish. Yeah. Okay. What her, what's her name? She doesn't say anything. What are the rest of the people on the island? Well, most of them, Tilly's with you. I see you show back up, Tilly's with you. Tano is kneeling down next to Little Flea as well. Um, can I, I'm going to ask, can I say him what he knows about her? Really and he says, well, Othris brought her in town less than a year ago. 
Um, I she normally stays under the docks with the other Skelpies, but uh, is she marked? Oh, can we see the back? Her back. You want to try to? Her hair is in pigtails, so you can see the back of her neck, but you can't. There's nothing there. I ask, have you ever been in the swamp before? Um, so yeah, you, see, you start seeing visions of the swamp, and it, and it almost looks like she's running, 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 fleeing. Like you, you just get this overwhelming urge to flee, as and just running, running, running through the mud and mire and vines and briars. <coughs> Do I get to see what she's running from? No, what we what do you want to say to her? What are your parents? Oh. And again her mind is just fixated on running through the swamp. Nothing about her parents <laughs> brings back anything. I mean it, well, I'm not <laughs> seeing the vision so I can't ask. Did, did he pick up anything when he asked what her name was? Did Ultras say where you find her more precisely? He was down the Brindle River near the southern end of the Goldbeg Highlands. There, uh, You don't want to go on the southern and, and eastern ends of the Goldbeg Highlands you don't want to go to. It's, it's called the Goldbeg Highlands for the stone giant clan that lives there. And they're, they, they are very aggressive. Isn't that where the gnolls are? About? The gnolls are in the north. Okay, no. North and northeast. Okay. Should I, but the Goldberg are also northeast of the north. Yeah, so like the, the Blightmoor, um, you got the Brindle River coming down, and the the Blightmoor is here, and there's a number of tributaries to the Brindle River that come into here. Um, and then the, the highlands kind of form a, a U shape around the. Should I probe deeper? Yeah, so the town is here. Okay. Should I probe deeper? I would say yes. Let's probe deeper. Alright, give me a D20. Uh, it's a DC 15, then. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, she fights you off with a 19 on the die. Oof. So she just basically expels you from her mind and begins to just sob. Strong <clears throat> What about Sabina? She seems well, really helpful. You've been giving her gold. Well, well. Yeah, but she met us there before we even gave her anything. Yeah. Considering who she's dealing with, you didn't have a strong enough world to resist the witch mark, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was level one. <laughs> Betrayed. I was, I was a child. Here that, we go get lodging. I uh, wish I whispered that, in her ear. That is also another concern. We're letting him cross okay. people's minds. How can maybe he will pass this mark off to other people? Um. Maybe that's the mark's job. She just stands there, frozen, her whole body shaking. Maybe she saw the the witch too. Are you gonna make another illusion of this and scare her? No. <laughs> 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 what do you want? Do you want to try to cast a spell again? Is there a second try? Does it describe in the spell there? It just tells the book dead. Good job. But I did make it to the spell section. Does anyone else want to ask this little girl anything? Or right talk here. to Sabina? Sabina, have you noticed anything unusual about this little girl? Is she with you all the time? No, no, well, she doesn't normally come out of the... She doesn't normally come out of the underdocks, but... Um, she always she, there otherwise? Yeah. She doesn't disappear at night? Or anything. No, no. No, she usually sleeps with me. She talks at all? Never once. Why did she decide to come out with you today? Oh, I just told her to come out. Yeah, if it succeeds, the spell ends. Okay. You want to cast it again? I only have one left then. Okay. Well, maybe. Uh, I think I'll just save it for something else. It, it, it's it's almost time. dinner time. It's not night time. But Does she ever wake up covered in blood? Covered in blood? No, God, no. 
can I How's it doing? pop your little flea, the gold piece? Did she, did she accept it? Mm-mm. She just kind of turns away. And Sabina goes, I'll take that. Okay. How about uh, we offer her some food? A crab cake. All right, make a persuasion. You offer it at the end of your sword. No. <laughs> and it's an axe of that. Fifteen. Fifteen. So you kneel down next to her and offer her a crab cake. Here, little little flea. This is, and she slowly, she has her doll here, and she slowly reaches out and she grabs it from you. <coughs> All right. I guess we can train her over several days. Uh, All right, little girl, you take care of yourself, little flea. We'll see you around. I uh, guess we should head towards the get a room, guys. Yeah, we should go to the yard. Yeah. There's about water and see what this thing's going to be able to save all this space. You want to go to the muck spout or Odia's bath water? Muck spout. Muck spout. Oh. Uh, muck spout. I just had to stay the night there. I just want to go there. Yeah. All right, Sabina says, you're, you're not really going to go there, are you? Why not? Well, if we go to the muck spout, shouldn't we get, go with, uh, what's her name? Who may say a real dog? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Those fine up. people told us to go up. in there as soon as we came into town. Those fine folk at the gate? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know they weren't uh, being truthful or nice to us. Dirty, yeah. dirty humans. For, go in there, I mean, there's seven of us. They're probably not there to for trouble. All right. I'm all for it. Let's, go get, let's go get a drink. I hope there's more of that point. It's not even three of each. We all up for going to the muck spot? Yep. Muck spot it is. Okay. So you guys make your way over there. Standing outside there are maybe half a dozen uh, kind of rough and tumble looking individuals. The building stands in complete contrast to the Odeog's bathwater, which is, you know, just catty corner to it. Um, this dilapidated dive bar is as rough and tumble as its patrons. The roof sags noticeably in the center, and the building itself leans left, away from the docks that support it. The windows contain no glass or shutters to secure the openings. Through the swinging saloon-style doors, a common room with the same charm as the ex- as a common room with the same char- charm as the exterior. You can kind of see it as the doors flop, and you, there's a, like I said, a half dozen guys outside, and they all kind of, as you guys walk up, they all kind of stand up, and you know they're up on the porch, so there's like stairs up to a porch area, and then you can go in. Are they blocking our path? Yeah, they walk in front of you. You look lost. Well, we're looking for a drink. Mm-hmm. We heard this is the best in town. Show me somebody. Box bottle. This is exactly where we're going, so we're absolutely not lost at all. All right. So you kind of like shoulder yourself past. Intentionally and hitting them just to be like, yeah, this is where I belong. Okay. So wham. Uh, make a uh, intimidation. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay. So as you guys file in, the six guys kind of walk in behind you. Um, chairs and tables arranged haphazardly about the room show signs of surviving countless brawls. Broken glass and empty bottles have been swept into corners. A door behind the bar leads into a kitchen that has all the sanitation of a pirate outhouse. The stairs lead up to a number of rooms where uh, you can see a number of Lasher gang hanging about. <clears throat> this is my kind of place. Um, Waffle? No, that was at the front. <laughs> Next to the bar is Turn a trap door. door that right now is closed. Um, a pair of women, not a woman, a pair of women, um, 
are walking around the place serving drinks. One is a half orc, and another is a human. Uh, right now, there are, with the, not including the six that filed in behind you, maybe fifteen people in this, in this, uh, in the bar. Josh, could you take her out? Um, sitting at a table, uh, you can see a man. He wears his pants are look like brown leather, but he wears no shirt, and his body is absolutely covered in scars. His face, he's, I mean, even without the scars, he probably wasn't a very good looking guy to begin with, but he's very, very muscular, very big, a, but a very attractive woman kind of sits in his lap and upon seeing you guys begins to um, kind of in a bizarre overt display of affection begins to um, grab him in all the wrong places, kiss his neck um, and just basically uh, make it clear that she's in a relationship with this guy. Sitting at the same table you see uh, another half orc whose head is shaved. He's got enormous mutton chops. And he's got a couple books open in front of him, and he's busy writing in one of them. Um, say again? Probably the bird song. Um, behind the yes. bar, there's a human. Uh, everyone make a perception check. <laughs> uh oh. 24. Um, you, you two notice that someone pays for a drink and he pockets some of the gold. But he, he does it pretty stealthily. Like, mo no one else really notices. Um, Is he a human? He's a human, yes. He's the bartender. Um, and then, coming out from the back, you see a halfling. He's got a bloody apron on. Um, let's see. Is there a half orc down the bar? No, no, no half orc at the bar. There's a half orc waitress. Uh, coming out from the back, there's a halfling. Like I said, he's wearing he's wearing a. A bloody apron. He's got a big bowl of stew. And he takes it over to the guy that's wearing no shirt that has all the scars all over him. Plops it front down in front of him. And uh, you can see the, the mutton chopped orc, half orc. He kind of, kind of, the smell kind of makes him repel or repulse himself away. Um, and the havling turns back to you guys. He goes, so what the fuck do we have here? We're looking for some uh, good brew. Brew. I serve two things here. Screaming Orc and my Cabbage Back Stew. Which one do you want? Oh, I heard we could get some uh, Marhilda's uh, brew here. Well, if she brings some in, maybe. That's not the Screaming Orc we got? Screaming orc. That's not hers. No. Okay. Uh, she's she's she has her own special golden brew. Where oh, well, let's have some of yours in the meantime. What's the, the good stuff gets here? Othris? Yeah. Where's Othris? I don't know why the hell would he be in here. Huh? Othris? Are you kidding? That dumbass lives down on Skid Row. Who's in charge of? This is my place. I'm Juice Cabbage Back. Juice. Juice. It's a great name. What the fuck are you talking about? Your name. I'm talking about. I bring some of. Minus whatever you bring. Screaming orc. Yeah. Bring some screaming orc. Uh, All right, we sell it by the bottle. One gold a bottle. All right. Here's your gold. Bing. I flip him a coin. Flip a coin in his direction. Okay. Not really caring if it hits him or not. Well, he catches it. He seems to be pretty quick on his feet. 
And he, go, and he yells, he goes, Jibbin, Jibbin, get these guys some screaming orc. I would just like the cabbage back stew. You want some cabbage back stew? Yeah. And you hear uh, a couple of the pirates kind of laugh. Hey, where'd you get that one at? So does Jim and her to be the bar, bartender? Uh-huh. So Jim and come, he gives the bottles to uh, the half-orc waitress who brings them over. Um, she's a muscular half-orc. She's young. She looks like a teenager. Um, but she's probably six, six and a half feet tall. Um, she really isn't the least bit feminine. Smells like whiskey. Does she have a beard? No. And she kind of slaps the bottles down on the table. <clears throat> the other waitress, um, she's a human girl. She looks like uh, she looks like she's maybe in her late twenties. It could put possibly be in her late thirties. Uh, her early 30s, but she looks like she's been around the block a few times. What about the uh, guys that followed us in? <laughs> They're just kind of like hovering around. <clears throat> Who uh, the fights at the pit stop? Who do you ask that to? Juice. Juice? Ah, you're pit fighters, are you? Of course, Captain. Nadja here, he points to the half orc serving girl. She, she fights in the pits. Maybe you could take her off. You, can, you know, anyone's welcome to fight in the pits. Earn some good money that way. What kind of money? Well, how much do you want to bet on yourself? You cover the, you find someone that's willing to cover the bet, you could make some real money. Nadja here, she doesn't need to serve here for us, but she, she just, she thinks I'm irresistible. Is magic allowed in the pit? Yeah, she's been out on the other ones too many. Huh? What'd you say? <laughs> she's been out on the other ones too many. No! Is magic allowed in the pits? Hell no! You get caught using magic in the pits. Can she even see that far down? <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Yeah. She's not blind. What happens if you get caught using magic in the pits? Oh, you find out from Pyramus. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't. I don't want to find out. Who's the champion of the pits? Well, Varus and Polo are those guys. Uh, they're they're the gladiators owned by uh, 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 by Pyramus. Neither one of them have been, been beaten yet. Are they in the barn? No. Is it just unarmed, or can you use weapons? Of course, you can use weapons. Use it wouldn't be much of a show if there wasn't a nice splattering of blood. I do agree. Hey, I'll buy those guys a bottle. With all this talking going on, the guy, the guy that's sitting at the table, with all the scars on him, he just kind of stands up and walks upstairs. I must have missed that when I was upstairs. Yeah. I must have missed that when I was upstairs. Oh, there's a guy sitting at the table. He wasn't wearing a shirt. And you can see that the scars... Once he turns around and goes up the stairs on his back, are much worse than even on his front. Is that part of what we that can be killed from what we heard about? Yeah. Probably. Is that a lot? Is that last year? Last year? I'll, I'll tell the waitress if you can get those guys to sit down, I'll bother them and leave us alone. We'll They're not mind, bothering us. Mind their own business. That's juice, and that was last year. Well, uh, I'll buy them. Yeah, a that's bottle. last I mean, I've been miles He doesn't like all this talking, though. though. All manners of beasts skittering around me. I mean, not six guys going to make me nervous. I'm not making. It's not making me nervous. Pretty. So the um, the other waitress comes out, throat. and she puts a bowl of cabbage back stew back stew in front of you, and juice. And everyone's eyes go to Josh, and you can see Lash was walking up the stairs with his bowl. And he's just eating away at it. What does it look like? It looks like gruel. It's like. A brownish green color. There's chunks of something floating around in it, and it smells awful. You're a glutton for punishment. You ready for a constitution saving throw? It's probably just boil water straight from the lake. Maybe if you eat all that, it'll get rid of that mark. 
It'll burn it because out. Because dead people don't need the mark. <laughs> does he serve a spoon? Does my for every one of us? Does he serve it with a spoon? Oh yeah, there's a spoon. Is the spoon clean? Well, it's in the, the no, because it's in the stew. <laughs> you it wasn't tell. clean when it went in either. Probably. <laughs> One of the pirates yeah, comes up yeah, behind yeah, you, pull out and, and he goes, I'll give burn. you ten gold if you could finish the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, I eat a bite. Alright, it's disgusting. How big is the bowl? It's a big bowl. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can, well, I have, can my character stomach the whole bowl? It's disgusting. So you can find out if you want to go for it. And all the pirates, all of them are looking at you. And so One of the pirates really? leans over to you and goes, Do you know what else it's good for? Go to your propellant. Come on, Hag Morris, that can be good call. Uh, I don't think yeah. I can stomach this whole bowl. Oh, Looks man. like it would be good to be caught. Juice some says, oh, Are you something. saying my cooking's no good? Well, you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I had crab cakes too, uh, earlier. Oh, that kind. Why would you eat that garbage when you could be eating my cabbage snack <laughs> stew? I, because he's irresponsible. <laughs> he just does whatever he feels Did like. Did you grow this cabbage on your back? <laughs> it's a cabbage back stew. There's no cabbage in it. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cabbage back. Juice cabbage back. He didn't get after himself. <laughs> yeah. And whatever he leaves in there. <laughs> Did you bathe him? Come on, crab cakes. <laughs> Come on. Let's go, betrayer. Suck it up. You started this. All right. We're ten gold. Okay. I try to see if my. I think we should dip our weapons in that next time we go to battle. <laughs> so all so eyes. Much. There's probably twenty sets of eyes in the bar on you. There's not a sound. All looking at you. I hear a cat. Let's go into the next stew. Freedom! Come on, Hey, our Belladon, would you like to eat some of this? <laughs> the cat's nowhere to be seen. Where is it? It's in the stew. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly disappeared. Yeah, something about that's pretty distant familiar. <laughs> Josh, you want to go for it? No. Are you kidding me? I bring out a whole bowl of my finest stew, and you're not even going to eat it. I will. I start chanting. I will Hagmar. give you a gold. See if, uh, All see right. If so you pirates. start chanting Hagmar, and some of the pirates start joining in until oh. finally the whole room's Hagmar. turning. Hagmar, Hagmar, Hagmar. I will, Hagmar. I will give you a gold for your troubles, though. I'll go up and grab the bowl. I'll start eating. It. <laughs> Are you, so you're gonna. All right. So. You brought this upon yourself. You so Snog starts it. eating it, and it is gross. It's gross. It's disgusting. Um, it's bitter. It leaves a horrible aftertaste. You I feel like you need a drink. I follow each spoon with, well, with a scream, with a swig of screaming work. I'm not kidding. All right. So everyone's all eyes are on you, and there's all kinds of laughter suddenly. And you notice the the big mutton chopped half orc is finally taking his taking his nose out of his book. And he's looking at what's going on. And you start eating, eating, and uh, I need to make a constitution save. Uh, please don't fail. Is it, is it poison? Yes. 17. 17. You're able to get it down, though you felt like a few times you wanted to puke it up. Was that the stew or the screaming orc? The stew. Okay. <laughs> um, the screaming orc, give me a save for that as well. <laughs> 12. Alright, so. Um, but you, you you're a dwarf. You have advantage on that. Yeah, you don't get advantage. Alright, uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's poison. laughs> right, so you take a level of exhausted from drinking so much screaming. Oh. So he's he's pretty he's pretty tipsy, but he manages to get the whole bowl down. And all the pirates are cheering. Hey! Yeah, and uh, some of the pirates come over and go, oh, you need to come out here more often. We'll be around for a while. All right. I, I point to him and I go, coward! <laughs> well, he's just, what do you expect? He's a scrawny elf. Still a coward. What do you say? 
that he's scrawny and an elf. I'm scrawny. I'm five foot eight, hundred fifty four pounds. Oh, yeah, he's pudgy. <laughs> he's actually kind of a fat elf. All right. So what do you guys want to do? Well, I won't be one up by an Eldorf. <laughs> bring me one of each two. Oh. oh yeah. Juice runs in the back and puts down a bottle. It's gold for a bottle and right. stew in front of you. I'll leave a gold for each. How much does the stew cost? The stew is only two copper. I'll leave a gold tip. <laughs> so if you're going to plow down a, a bowl right. of it, it's going to take a con save for the whiskey and a con save for the... You two are the, rooming together. The cabbage back stew. Yeah, I'm not sharing an outhouse with them. No. I'm not sharing a city. <laughs> Don't share the outhouse. Twenty-two for the All right, see. So you don't take any exhaustion or anything, but you you keep the stew down, and the pirates are all drinking now, and they're all pretty they're pretty relaxed around you guys. Um, and eventually, that half orc comes over to your table after things calm down a bit, and some of the pirates start going back to their own tables, and and he says, "So, uh, what brings you to town here?" The river. The river brought you to town. It's What's this? Uh, Is this it's Gibbs? A, yeah, I'm Gibbs. Gibbs. It's uh, kind of... You that money man there or something? Say that again? You were that money man around there? Well, I, I run things for the gang, yeah. Trader of goods? Uh, that's not me. Go down to the warehouse, maybe you could talk to uh, Mr. Gildenbrash about... Uh, some fine goods acquired in the by the pirates here. Have you guys? Has your uh, group encountered any gnolls in the area? Gnolls? No. I don't, gnolls? No. I've been told that you know if any orcs have been through town trying to peddle high-end equipment. No orcs. No orcs. We don't get many pure orcs through here these days. Not soon. Yeah, it's been about three years. Doesn't seem like a lot of pure anything comes through here. It's a good, good little place. Good little place. So, uh, what brings you to town, though, other than the river? Kind of. The moor. The moor. Why in the world would you come here? I mean, you don't come to the Blightmoor sightseeing. And so they bursting through the door. There's Marhilda. She's got a big keg on wheels, and she's wheeling it in. And all the all the pirates start to cheer. Oh, the good stuff finally gets her. Yes. And she. We're gonna wave her over, right? Bring her, uh, she bring, sees bring you, and she, she just beams and comes <laughs> right over. And of course, all the pirates kind of converge, and she doesn't charge anyone for her brew. She just kind of hands it out. Good one. Good one. Better get some of that. <laughs> Watch the taste of that foul thing we ate earlier. <laughs> the cabbage. You guys ate the cabbage bath stew? Yes. Oh, yeah. Are you crazy? They did. Maybe. A little bit. <laughs> well, for, there was a challenge. Except for crazy. Where's my tail? Sure, there was a good way to blend them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I've never eaten it myself, but I was warned ahead of time. Crab Cakes McGee here gave up though, did he? Yeah. You're not gonna earn the respect of anyone around here if you don't. You, can see you need to. You need to man up and eat that bowl. Come, Juice, bring him another bowl. Respect doesn't matter. And he the slaps a bowl in front of you, and he and they say, "You got it. You got to do it." Why? And she fills up a big cup of her golden brew and puts it in front of you, on the house. I mean, you got to eat that. Because you can't give up. Oh, why can't I? Well, what's the? You'll be called Crab Cakes McGee the rest of your life if you don't eat that bowl. What? Why does that matter? <coughs> Coward, sure. drink up. Because then you'll be known as. Quit arguing with McGee. a woman. Bro, <laughs> show. Press the dissertation. Yeah, make it taste good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's set well, but it'll taste better. <laughs> Some of the pirates start chanting Hagmar again. And they're all getting pretty liquored by this point. 
Except for Gibbs, who does he he'll sip on his golden mm-hmm. brew, but that's about it. Yeah, I can't really eat that. <laughs> yeah, I can't really eat that. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I know somebody that will, and she scoots it in front of you. All right. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll have a couple spoonfuls. Uh, All right, make your con save if you start eating it. Somebody's got a man up around here. Uh, or my ideals. 20. 20. All right, so you're like halfway through this thing. Do you want to just keep going? Do you want to slug through it? You feel yeah, sick, though. I'm going to ask you. Dad says I'm not manning up. Someone who's going through. Okay. And kind of do what he did, but watch it down with the butter stuff. Okay. You don't need a second okay. con save. You were, you were able to choke it down. The Golden Brew's not like just grain alcohol like Screaming Orcs. So you don't need the... <laughs> the extra saves. It's not a thousand proof. Um, <laughs> but you you managed to get it down, and all the 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 pirates are cheering and yeah. smacking you on the back. I start to burp a little bit. All right. Um, <clears throat> Nadia, the big half orc woman, sits in your lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the uh, ten gold? Ten gold from the content. You're looking around. You're trying to find the guy that that <laughs> offered that. He's nowhere to be seen. Another coward. Well, you trust a pirate? Gibbs still hanging around here. Yeah, he's at your table now. Okay. I'll take him. Draw off, off my. I'm going to go look s- at him, and I'm like, what's, what's the trap door for? Mm, Grigory lives down there. Grigory. Yeah. What's Grigory? He's the we were told about. Well, you want, you want to ask about orcs? Well, Grigri's a an orc. Some think he's a half orc. I can't really tell. He's just ugly as hell. That's all I know. But he showed up a little bit after uh, Lash came to town. He's the other magic user. I'm gonna go sit at the bar. Okay. Alright, Jimmy. Whether it even be seen or is a pirate just take. <laughs> I go to the trap door. Yeah. You're gonna go over to the trap door? Flip it open. Alright, it's locked. Strike two. Are you gonna try to force it? Mm-hmm. And you start tugging on it, and Gibbs says, Yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. We don't need to poke the bear. Well, like I said, something some some say he's half orc. Sometimes, I mean, I'm gonna go find out. Well, he'll come up eventually. You don't need to go. You don't need to go down there. Okay, I start knocking on the door, stomping on it. All right. Eventually, you hear. Well, I'll make a perception. Sixteen. Okay, so eventually you hear. Um, somebody coming up a ladder. Like you could hear the footsteps, the rungs of the ladder. Um, and then a mechanism, the, the lock, and the thing flies open. The trap door flies open. Um, and when he comes out, he's clearly not a fool. He's a half orc, uh, but he's very lanky, uh, and he's tattooed from his head all the way down to his feet, just covered in tattoos. Um, and you, most of them are, are are runes and other symbols of of unholy nature, if you will. You could make um, a religion check if you want. Wait, there. Twenty-three. Nineteen. Um, these are definitely dark runes, profane symbols. He's even got piercings all over his body, fetishes that dangle from his face, his chest, his belly. Um, when he comes up, he's a sorcerer. Um, and the smell coming from that basement is just enough to choke a goat. You know, it's disgusting. Uh, and he. That's where your fingers too. That's where his two comes from. Um, Creek Grease Bathwater. 
Yeah. Yes. He's lanky because he's not keeping his food. But as he's climbing out, you notice there are several of the pirates. Some of them just leave. They go upstairs. Other ones, they, they go out the front door. They don't want any part of him. Um, but uh, what when he finally makes his way out of the, the hole and he looks around, he's got no hair on his face. He's got just like some, some strands of long hair off of his chin. Uh, but nothing on his head to speak of. Um, you notice something that's... I mean, as disturbing as all these piercings and tattoos and everything are, um, you, his left eye is... It looks like it's about twice the size of his other eye. But in reality, it's just because his eyelids have been cut out. So he's got this big eye. Um, it's... It's surrounded by cracked, calloused skin, um, and it seems to kind of ooze, kind of semi-coagulated blood. Yeah, go ahead. It's all the way up the stairs. Yeah, all the way up the stairs right and down the hall. First door on the left. And he looks around, and in Orcish, he yells. Who's been hammering on my door? Responded Orcus. Me. And he looks at you and he says, What? Where's the green orc missing his right eye? Green orc missing it. I don't know anything about a green orc missing his right eye. But you look interesting. And he starts walking around you. He stinks to high heaven. But he. In a lot, in a lot of ways, it smells a lot like he's um, been around like a corpse for too long. Like he just has this sulfurous, sickly sweet smell about him that that uh, is uh, makes it feel. You guys that have been eating cabbage batch stew, you're you've been having a hard time keeping it down with this guy around. And like I said, a lot of the pirates, if they, if they don't leave the room, they kind of turn their back to him, and, and he comes up. Real close to you, he stinks real bad. He's like, you see this, see this, and he's got this bone piercing through his skin. He goes, this, this guy, this guy once came to me and he asked me a bunch of questions that I didn't really feel like answering or didn't know the answer to, and he just bugged the hell out of me. But now he helps protect me, and he kind of, he kind of like make, moves the bone in and out, and a little bit of blood comes out with it. And he's real close to you. <laughs> Take a step closer to him. If I can, I'll just get closer to him. Okay. Still just direct eye contact. I don't care about these people. What do you say it bothers you? Alright. Because I, I think we could, you and I, we, we have a, a bond, you and I. There's something about you. There is a bond. There is a bond. There's a bond. There's absolutely a bond. And I think... I think... I think your friend's here. What, what brings you here to Quag Cove? Surely it's not the beautiful scenery. Our business is our own. Mm. My business is ours. takes a deep breath, and he looks directly at you, Josh. Um, come over here, Josh. Bring a D20 with you. The betrayer starts to work his magic. Yep. There it goes. He's controlled. All right, roll that die in here, but don't look at your result. Right here, in my hands, Josh. <laughs> don't look at your result. I'm not. All right. So he looks over at you, and you can't help, you can't help but look away, Josh. It's just like very, very over-the-top creepy, and his eye just seems to kind of pulse at you. Um, and you see, everyone, all you guys can see, as he's staring, you can see Hagmar just kind of like wilt in his chair away from this guy. Just 
Why is that guy staring at you? Can I make a knowledge check? Well, well you don't need just, this two deaths while you're staring at him. Um, roll a d20. Tell me what you got. Plus. You know, I'm not asking you for any skills. I'm just want to tell me what you got. 17. Uh, 17 base. Okay. So you definitely feel like there's something off about this guy. Um, there's, there, he, uh, you've never seen magic like this before, uh, but he definitely tried to exert something upon you. And he's, he looks at Jibben. He says, Jibben, come with me. And they both march up the stairs. This guy tried to... I don't know if he tried to try And Marhilda, Marhilda's eyes are real big, and she goes, I don't he like that guy. He tried either. to do the same thing you did to the little girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nash, did you? Um, I... He tried to do something to me, but I don't know what. You don't know what, or you don't want to tell us what? Maybe it's an action with the uh, mark. Was, did we notice with all those tattoos that he had a mark himself? Uh, you didn't I see any large black spot. I mean, he was barely wearing any clothes whatsoever. Okay, so it wasn't a or anything. No. And again, he only had like very personal stringy though. hair hanging down, you know. Did they go upstairs to Rash? Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're, they went upstairs. It's You're not really sure where, though. I mean, they just kind of disappeared upstairs. I mean, last one upstairs too, but there's a number of rooms upstairs. Yeah. Are there? Where's the Gibbon? Is he still around? Gibbon? No, Gibbon. Gibbon left, Gibbon. Gibbon left with no, with Grigri. So who's still working here? The bartender. Nadja, and the other server who you don't know her name yet, oh, and Juice. Juice, who's standing on some boxes behind the bar now. Done with this place. Turn around. Start walking out. And look over my shoulder. And I That's said, "Juice, proper, he's stealing from you." And I point at the bartender and I walk out. What? Stealing from me? That's some heavy allegations there. No one would steal from the gang. He's uh, some magic user. So you think he read your thoughts? I think he might have. Because he went up the stairs. So where do you guys want to head from here? Are you going to stay, hang out at the muck spout longer with Marhilda, or? Uh, we should go to the yards room for the night. Probably a better place to around for a room. Okay. Better chance of How waking up to the light. Stay around here. All night. He does. Are your juice attack again? Uh, no, you don't hear anything. Um, he, uh, when you guys come out of the muck spout, though, um, Marhilda's like, oh, you guys are leaving already? Oh, it's getting late. <clears throat> late? What's late? It's not dawn yet. By then, it's early. We might go have a look around. Uh, I knew in town. I understand. I understand. You want to travel by daylight. Leave it. Well, so our friend here seems to have come down with a slight illness. Oh, uh, really? It's best as best. I don't think he got any <laughs> stew. <laughs> he has a stew. One spoon. <laughs> All right. So, Marhilda says, uh, you mind if I, uh, I guess I could come with you if you want. All right. All right. Join us. I'll show you around. Where are you going? The fights will be starting soon. Now at the brand, if you want to go down and hang out down there. I like to jump in the arena sometimes. But really, Gromley is the one that loves to fight. He probably, he, he's a jackass, but you know, he, he, uh, he's good in a fight. And he's loyal to a fault. Are most of these fights to the death? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, 
Sometimes there's fights to the death, but that has to be agreed on in advance. It's not much money. I mean, there's not enough people here in town to have fights to the death every night. Is Nadia fighting, fighting tonight? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know, maybe. You get enough screaming orc in her and she'll do anything. <laughs> you fight you fight start? Or one? After dark. No, we, we can't dark be fighting. That wouldn't be fair. Almost. That wouldn't be fair for the other people. Oh, that's the talk right there. Trash talk. <laughs> we can watch. Need it. All right. So, um, you guys want to go down to the brand or you want to go to Odeo's? Should we check into Odeo's? So we have a place to go to. Okay. All right. When you head on down to Odiugs, there by night there are the number of guards at the barn has doubled. Um, when you walk in, there is a very old man on duty at a desk at a desk who smiles at you. Um, dark. There's when you walk inside. Um, the dark, stary, the dark, cherry-stained front door. Um, there's wood floors, carved hardwood trim, area rugs with elaborate dragon designs, um, sh a chandelier in the main room there. Um, he says, oh, we, this man at the desk is, oh, I'm Pet Shop. And, uh, I want to welcome you, visitors. Uh, it's very rare that we get new visitors. Um, there's a <clears throat> a number of staff you can see working in the main room. There's a bartender. All of them are dressed in very fine clothes. Um, so, what can I do for you tonight? I, I would imagine that you all want uh, lodging for the night. Do you have any horses that need to be taken care of? Uh, we'll be serving dinner soon. The rates, the rooms. Uh, well, you can get a single room for one gold per night. There's a double room for one gold, five silver per night, uh, and uh, there's a lavish single room, and then there's the king suite that you can get. That's ten gold per night, though. Yeah, single. And how many nights will you be staying with us? Staying All right, ten gold a night. How many nights do you want to pay for? Five. Five nights. You give them fifty gold. I paid for three nights. All right. I paid for five. going out tomorrow. We don't know how long we're going to be I'll pay for five. Singles. Yeah, well, single. dinner. Dinner will be served in less than an hour. The cooks have been hard at work tonight. Um, uh, depending on what you want, of course. You have any cabbage bags to eat? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, all of the staff here look completely out of place. Um, they, they're very fluent with, with common. Um, they seem like they're, they come from culture. Um, it's really magical. You have to detect magic ready? No, it's okay. I can't really tell. Um, all of your rooms are on the first floor of the building. Although there is an upstairs, but Pet Shell will tell you that none of those rooms are for rent. What's our deal for? Say again? What's our deal for now? Well, the staff stays upstairs, as well as Soren Corallo's close friends. We're good buddies with him, he just doesn't know yet. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Uh, well, again, uh, dinner will be served soon. And, uh, perhaps you could uh, let me know soon what, if, you, if you'd be interested in dining with us tonight. Otherwise, um, I wish you a very good evening. And your rooms are... All much like the main room, every there's like no expense spared. You know the the beds are all four posted and and have drapes. Um, there's fine furniture in every room. They locked. Every room locks. Yes. Um, what is there to dine on tonight? Oh well, I'm glad you asked. Um, 
for two gold pieces, uh, the, there will be a three-course meal, uh, starting off with some quince bread. I thought you were full. <laughs> I, I, I mysteriously have regained my uh, well, I my think there's still a bowl of that's food what, that's what Sad Vort did to you. he emptied your stomach <laughs> so uh, again for two gold you you could start out with some quince bread followed uh, by some venison with a dessert of gingerbread um, and we have a number of fine drinks on, on hand tonight we've got some Fine aged scotch for five silver. It's a for a small glass. Um, Elsnor cider is quite good, one silver. Uh, Western wine. Um, we also have a honey mead that, ooh, while uh, that dwarf over at the Ragabrash just claims we stole the recipe for, she has no idea what she's talking about. Oh yeah, that she is. Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> she didn't see she says you did steal else. it. At least you tried, and you messed up my recipe. And we've also got a shandy ale. But uh, if 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 you're not looking for something so heavy, we're also serving some uh, some chicken pasties tonight, which is just a breaded chicken. Where did you get venison and chicken? No oh, we have to have it brought in. Soren Corallo spares no expense at his uh, at the Odeo's bathwater. Yeah, I see that the building is very beautiful on the outside and the inside. Oh, it is quite fine. Yes, in fact, the entire staff that you see here, we he hired us from the city, brought us all in. Pay. We are all paid handsomely to take care of you. See that Getting screaming orc. Screaming orc. <laughs> I will take the, the three course meal. You're going to pay the two gold, Josh? Yeah. That's also served with a, a glass of aged scotch. Uh, hold the scotch. I'll take the meal. I'm just going to give the scotch to him. <laughs> and the scotch All the right. Wine. All right, well, he'll give you honey mead instead. How about that? That's so made me yeah. hungry, bring me two meals. I don't. I'll just give the honey mead to him. Cool. You don't want any drink? My young man. I'm going to have his drink. Life is too short. What are you going to do? Uh, how much were the chicken pasties? The uh, that, that meal is only five silver. Five silver. I'll take, I'll take that. And the three quarters is two? Gold, yeah, but that includes a, a glass of aged scotch. You're not eating? Nope. Why not? I don't trust them. I don't know where these animals are from. Trust me when I say it's just, it's only the finest meats. I'm sure you believe that. I do. What makes my room a sweet? The king's sweet? Yes. It's a huge king size bed. There's a bathtub in it, um, which can be filled with warm water, hot water, or cold water upon your command. Um, there's also a wide array of soaps and perfumes. There's a wardrobe with complimentary robes, like cotton robes that you can wear for after the, uh, the bath, and a, a large fireplace should you so desire it. Um, yeah. How many did you pay for five minutes? Yeah. Oh, 50 gold. That's 50 gold, 50 gold. That's 700. As you guys eat, coming down the stairs, you can hear some heavy, heavy footsteps. Walking into the common room and out the front door, you guys see a dragon born. Um, huh? Is that common? Dragonborns? You haven't seen one here yet, um, but he's clearly of uh, black dragon lineage. Uh, but he's wearing heavy armor, and he's got a halberd in one hand, and he just makes a beeline for the front door and goes out. I'm going to ask Mark Hilda if she knows who that is. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's a that's a fella named Trajan. I think he's heading over to Fusty Lugs. Fusty, surely you've seen Fusty. It's that whorehouse. That's a oh, ah. that's our character. We, we went by it. Yeah, it's Fusty Lugs. Yeah, you take you a weapon there. Well, it's night out in, in Flag Cove. It's good to take a weapon everywhere you go, right? Mm. Well, there's a girl there he, he kind of uh, pays for. Um, no one else is even allowed to touch her, except for him. He pays, pays extra. <laughs> So you guys are just sitting around eating food, huh? Loving like it. I get my sitting my right medicine. Yeah. We're going out tomorrow. We don't know when the next time we're gonna have a decent meal. My character doesn't drink. Too true. Too true. All right. I want to go to the arena. You want to head over to the arena? I want to see what's going on down there. I'll go. We all gonna go? Sure. Let's well stick together in this place. All right. Yeah, I finished my second meal on the way there. <laughs> I'll drink my second meal on the way there. Shall I have your bath ready for you upon your return? Yes. This is pet shop. Warm. Warm water. Yes. Very good. So you guys head out from um, the Odeon's bath water. Do you want to take the route in front of? Uh, the muck spout, or do you want to go around past the the fisherman's wharf? The pirates or flowers? What's going on? I guess we could go by the muck spout because we've been through there already. Yeah. 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 So well, why don't we go the other way? Because I don't want to deal with that orc again. Oh, I do. I don't. <laughs> you try to cat. I think you might have read my thoughts. <laughs> don't, don't go inside. We're just going to walk by the outside. Maybe he will be peeking out at you. Alright, so as you guys walk past the muck spot, there's a number of pirates who kind of drunkenly give you a cheer for all of your all of your cabbage back uh, antics. Just pull the whole thing out if it went back there. It's the one that owes me it's 10 really gold light. Do I see it? Yeah, got crew. There it is. Huh? Do I see the one that owes me ten gold? No. Yeah. <laughs> Besides that, he offered it to him, remember? But I, I completed the challenge. Yeah, but he offered it to him. That's what his argument is. But you don't see him anyway. Um, so a set of stairs leads down. So the, the entirety of this area is at 15 feet above the swamp. This set of stairs takes you down about 10 feet. Or 5 feet, I'm sorry. So this area of Quag Cove is about 10 feet up. Um, there are torches and braziers lighting up the entire area. In the center of the compound, a wide oval pit about 10 feet deep and enclosed with cypress poles descends to the muddy ground below. So if you were to drop into the pit, there would be no exit. These poles would lock you in. And it's just the, the natural floor? Like it's mud. Yeah. Is the fog here? There's a fog here, but it's lighter. Uh, 40 foot wide building with a reinforced door in its center appears to be a prison of some kind. And that's at the south end here. Uh, with bars in each of its windows and four guards posted outside. A wooden sign hung above the prison features a pair of cross swords and reads The Brand in Elvish script. Um, and a crowd has begun to, to, to uh, meet, or Excuse me. A crowd has begun to gather here as as uh, <coughs> um, the fights are getting ready to start. The guards have the same kind of livery as all the other guards. Um, no, they appear to be dressed in elvish style leather armors, um, and they have the same symbol that's on the sign, the cross sword symbols, um, embossed on the leather. And the seats are the standard. You stand around. Is, is there Look a, down in the pits. Can, you, I, can we see into the prison area? Um, yeah, there's a number of people in there. Can we see lizard folk? Yeah. There are some lizard folk in there. 
Um, and when you look down in the pit on the um, oops on the west end of the pit, there's a there's a portcullis of sorts that could be raised and lowered, and it le there, you can see that there's a tunnel that leads back there. So there's some sort of underground structure underneath the dock here. Can we cleanish? Like are there body it's, parts in there, or are there? You don't see any body parts. No. Can we wander around to the prisoner area, or is it like guarded? There's a lot of people in this area now. Um, like I said, this area, this building is one story tall. You can lead right in here. And this area, this building is two stories tall. Um, make everyone make a perception test. Twenty one. Fourteen. So with a lot of the pirates and locals around, something that stands out to you, um, you notice a female lizard folk kind of standing off in the corner here by herself. She's wrapped herself in some cloak, in some cloaks and, and rags, um, and she looks rather frightened. Let's go over and talk to her. Does she look like she's trying to conceal that she's... Uh, not like, not like completely, but she obviously isn't trying to stand out either. Walk over and say hello. Her, her eyes get real big and she kind of looks around like... Are you from the highlands to the east? She looks around some more. Have you no tongue woman? I, so back I, there while you're at it. I, 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 I have tongue secret draconic. I I repeat that in draconic. Well, she says in common, I have a tongue. <laughs> We're not here to hurt you. Just you a question. What is it you want? Are you from the highlands to the east? Well, make a persuasion check. See if you can get her to lower her guard a little bit. Fifteen? She says, <clears throat> well, not, not the Highlands exactly, just my village, my the mounds, they're just inside of the swamp at the bottom of the Highlands. We were told that your area was attacked by gnolls. Yes. And that, is that how some of your people ended up here? Yeah, I, I don't understand these dock people. We came here for food, and they want gold. What it, gold? What is? What? Why is gold useful? That's our money. How we pay for things, for goods, services. I, I don't understand. Why does it matter? We just needed food, and they said we had to fight. My husband. Well, the culture here is materialistic. My life mate, he lost the first fight. Now they say he has to stay here until he makes the money, makes gold. How much? How much? <laughs> well, I don't know how it happened. They, I mean, I don't even, I don't understand. They, he says I need 800 of these pieces of gold. Ooh, I don't, I don't. A lot. The dog people came and we had to leave, and, and even they they took our people to the north. They took them away into the highlands. We, I don't understand any of this. Do you, do you have any of this gold? I don't. I don't have any gold. My, they say my husband must win fights to make this these gold pieces. Is he strong? He's young, but he's strong. If they had him fight some big human who he just laughed at him as he beat him into the mud. You say they you need eight hundred? Yeah, they said we, we have to have eight hundred pieces of gold to 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 free my husband and 
I don't have this 800 gold. I don't know how long it'll take. How many how many times is 800 gold in fights? Is the orc still with us? The orc? Or the lady? Marhilda? Yeah. She dwarf. Dwarf? Yeah, she came with me. Close enough. Um, I asked her, <laughs> um, do you know how much gold you can cover? Oh, you well, you got to find someone to cover a bet. Like, you got to bet. But it, generally, the slaves are allowed to. Like, when I was here, I was making between three and five gold a fight. What if we. Who's the strongest uh, person? So basically, they fleece. That sure sounds that way. Uh, but I wouldn't let put it past Pyramus to do worse, though. What if we could enter in bed? We can enter in bed. We can enter the fights. Yeah. Who do we talk to about fighting? Well, eventually, eventually Varus will come out and he'll start taking bets and set arranging the fights. Axer, if, if she wants something with us, where would I go? With us? To where? Where have you been staying? I've been staying under the dock. There's, uh, there's some prison. There's some. Um, prisons underneath the, the dock here where my husband's being kept with some of my other people. And I can talk to him there at least many, through the wall. How many others? There are three others. All, all of your kind? Yeah. What are the... Um, how much are they having to come up with? Well, we're, we're all 800 gold. No, we... Total? Yeah, we, we need 800 gold. For so one hundred for three of them. Um, does anyone want to enter the fight? Well, let's find. Let's talk to whoever's in charge here. I will. I'm gonna have to leave because I. Yep, it's five. So let's do XP real fast, and then we'll pick up here next. Everyone good for next Saturday, right after yeah. the holiday? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So there's a lot there. One of the things that's going on with this adventure is that a bunch of the XP is role playing based, as you can tell. Not much in the way of fighting going on yet, but that will come. So let me calculate experience really fast. So five would be six, five hundred. Say again. Seven five, or we're going to be at six five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What experience would that? Six five hundred. Six five hundred. Everyone gets 750 XP. So there's two two objectives you completed today. Um, you earned the trust of Sabina and learned what she knew of Quag Cove, and you learned what drove Nan in insane. All right. And again, this entire adventure is very, very heavy on role play. Um, but the deeper you get into it, the more the more action there will be. Um, so if that's more your thing, it, it, it will come. Um, but it's the the start of this adventure is particularly all of the things going on in um, Quag Cove are it's real heavy on the role play side, and there are a, a about 22 different little subplots inside the village here that you guys can discover and earn X XP for. So, alright, well thank you all for the start of this. I have no idea how long this adventure is going to take to run from start to end. Um, every encounter has been run in, as an isolated, um, uh, just one shot fight. Um, so I think everything's well balanced, but, you know, I ran them myself, so I, I'm just kind of moving the pieces about it. It'll be much more interesting to see how each individual person reacts as they're taking on a hag or taking on a monster or whatever. So, <clears throat> thanks again, everybody. Next Saturday, 1 o'clock.
We will continue at the brand. Yeah. At the fight. At the fight. <laughs>